Hello everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to the GCS playoffs. This of course is Taiwan's number one league, one of the best leagues in the entire world. I am D2, with me is the Source, and we are in the thick of it. We are near the end, the Source, as AHQ put up an amazing result yesterday, defeating Red Hot SMG. And as disappointed as you were in SMG, I was equally as excited to see AHQ bring their best and bring their A-game and take them out. And here we are in the semifinals. Now AHQ is going to go against Flash Wolves. Yeah, it was a uh, little bit of a disappointment to see SMG after such a hot run to kind of fall to the way they did. But AHQ didn't give them any quarter. They didn't give them any opportunities with the exception of maybe one or two drafts i didn't think that ahq should have won or should have been able to make work but they buckled down in a way we haven't seen from them in a long time and so they definitely deserve the win i would argue three drafts <laughs> every single game they won i felt like they lost the draft but it was just ridiculous play from them and in particular that last game the closeout game game four it was one of those situations where we're looking at it like well if they per play perfectly then they can win this game, and they damn well near perfectly played. They did, as I speak like Yoda all of a sudden, but it was it was pretty nuts to watch, and I am excited to see them advance, even though it's sad for SMG. That's just how it is, because I would argue we had the best teams in the league and perhaps in the world in our first round that matchup there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fair to argue that they were performing significantly better than the two teams sitting above them. Both J-Team and Flash Wolves have had significant moments of weakness over the past couple of weeks, uh, especially with Flash Wolves either uh, being unable to field their traditional mid laner and bringing in missing, or whether or not that was an active choice. Um, no matter what, it kind of put them in a bit of a slump. They didn't look like themselves. Same with J-Team kind of faltering at a couple of moments, especially with their loss to SMG. So it's been a little bit of a rocky road for a lot of these teams. So I want to I wanna see this matchup really prove one side or the other that they really deserve to be here because as good as they are, things have been shaky over the last couple of <laughs> I'm just looking at these intros for the Flash Wolves. And they just look wholly uninterested in those set pieces that they just did. They're like, okay, you're going to look down and you're going to look up. And then they're like, okay. And they just do exactly that. Instead of showing any sort of emotion or trying to look cool, they're like, eh, whatever. We're, they're cold, they're calculated, and they win team fights. And that's the Flash Wolves. Yeah, I, th I think we do need to have, uh, I think players need to go to uh, a little bit of acting school. Well, these I days, think, or I think or, or the HQ looked a little bit badass. The space. <laughs> I think HQ looked Fair a little enough. bit badass when they did their set pieces. <laughs> At least they they like, tried to look cool and like menacing into the camera, but I felt like Flash Wolves were like, uh, like and those probably take five. By the way, they're like, all right, this is the best we're gonna get. <laughs> yeah, I just I always feel like when players do that, like there isn't there is enough personality behind it. Like let them let them be. Let, let the, maybe 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 it's really just just a a combination of, of various cultures and then just not being able to get the players to kind of express some emotion. But it is what it is. I heard a rumor that in Korean esports, in particular StarCraft, from the beginning, they were kind of coached on how to like talk smack before a game. And because usually you're really deferential, especially before a match or something like that in Korean culture. But they were coached to be like, just, just, you need to bring up, 
you know, the hype for this game so you need to talk smack and say you're gonna beat him 4-0 or something like that. <laughs> I think I heard that, <laughs> which which I would believe because otherwise, you know, I don't really see them coming out and saying some of the things they normally did. So maybe maybe our HQ players are following in that Korean tradition of playing up to the crowd. I mean, I think one of the best I, I think one of the best uh, insults I ever heard out of Korean StarCraft was a player say someone was like, So what do you what do you think of your opponent making it this far? And his statement was something along the lines of, I didn't even know he was in the tournament. <laughs> and it was just like, dear merciful heaven, you have no you have no chill. Like, that is 100% no chill. That reminds me, actually, when I was in the, the uh, World Championships for Hearthstone, and I had a really, really late match. It was, it was like at 10.30 the, the day before. And then Firebat wakes up the next day. He's like, I'm playing D2. I thought I was going to play Star Strife Grow. <laughs> and then he just was like, what? He was like, okay, I need to like reconfigure my deck like this because he didn't realize he'd already gone to bed. In any case, uh, that's all a different story. But we are getting ready for this match. Flash Wolves versus AHQ. And as much as we've talked about AHQ, they actually showed us that any team can really turn it on when they most need it, and we'll see if Flash Wolves is able to do that. And as we know, they are kind of unparalleled when it comes to team fights. And they can be down 2,000 gold, it doesn't matter, they just flip a switch, and they kill you. And they've beaten every single team in the league at least once, so... Uh, Flash Wolves is certainly a force to be reckoned with as we take a look at who is the most first buffs in the game. Fantastic. <laughs> best, best stat. Best <laughs> stat. <laughs> um yeah it's uh to, to the point of hq and and flash wolves both kind of like or at least flash wolves being this this dangerous beast to corner like we said with uh with shishi gone for a little while and missing coming in it has been a difficult road for them over the last few weeks they I don't know if they're completely up to form. And AHQ just got just beat up an SMG that looked a little scared. If Flash Wolves don't kind of get their feet under them um, very, very quickly, we could see H AHQ just steamroll through them just like they did SMG because Flash Wolves has shown this, 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 uh, this lack of cohesion with missing coming in and even with shishi back there was st it still looked shaky like they were still getting back to what it's like to play with shishi right and they did have one really good match i'm looking at it yeah when they when they beat one i guess it was only a 2-1 over one but they looked a lot better than they had up until that point when missing was in for shishi uh that said i think they were they put in like not tura was it tura I, i'm getting some of these like other non-star names mixed up here, but they try to put someone in. Oh, that was one who put in someone for Hualin. That's right. So, but Flash Wolves are able to beat them in the end. As we do take a look at Flash Wolves lineup: Heroes, Wayne, Shishi, Ice Fang, and Run. I believe, yeah, this is their normal lineup, which is good to see, particularly Shishi in that mid lane. But like I was going to say, the last time these two played, these two teams played, was exactly a week ago, and HQ defeated them two to zero, and that featured Sun on Lubu both times. Yeah, the elusive, the elusive Sun Lubu, and we have to note with SMG down, Sun has kind of reclaimed his throne by proxy. <laughs> um, there weren't a lot of lane matchups for us to really see, but with Sun looking more confident, your next question becomes: How good uh, is Flash Wolves going to be at shutting down the control that Sun tends to have? Especially now with Li Yang out of there, with him in his rearview mirror, some can be like, "I, I am the, I am the, the Dark Slayer God. No one can really touch me," and that can easily bring back a whole other level of confidence to this team and open them up to one running more strategies that we haven't seen out of them because they've been putting Sun onto these more defensive characters because they've been lacking that that kind of uh, that that extra stopping power out of out of the Dark Slayer lane. And what are they going to do with the fact that they know Shishi has been in and out and things haven't looked good and the team fighting from Flash Wolves isn't as dangerous? Does that mean AHQ is willing to take them on their own terms and not necessarily play the larger macro game centered around Sun? Well, let's take a look at AHQ's lineup. Going to be Sun and Chaser in those solo lanes, Hawk in the mid, J-Jock as support, 
And finally, I'm forgetting Rush <laughs> in jungle. All right, and so our good old fashioned AHQ team. Now, we talk about Sun and how he's been, you know, like by proxy since Liang is out of the tournament, he's potentially the best in the world. But let's not discount heroes because he's been extremely good for Flash Wolves. And even when they were struggling, it felt like he was the only one doing well for his team <laughs> and winning his particular matchup in that lane. So he is someone to he watch. He was definitely keeping them in the game in a lot of scenarios. And I, I'm this matchup is just so interesting to me because on the side of HQ, we had Hawk play amazingly yesterday. Sun is always is you know a great player. And Rush can be a bit up and down. But one thing that stood constant, at least in the games that they've won, is immaculate team play, and in particular, immaculate macro, just running the other team around in circles. And then when you look up, so many towers are down on the other side, right? And they just out-rotate you around the map. That, And on the other hand, Flash Wolves, they're not really known for their macro, but every single one of their players can be seen as an individual superstar, including the guy on the screen right now, and Wayne. And you have Wayne, you have Heroes, you have Shishi, you have multiple players who can make the crazy play. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned slightly for, but when when we kind of talk about that that star and that playmaking power that Flash Wolves can have, I still think they shine best as a unit. And to your right. point, if they're not macroing, they're looking for team fights. We did just see AHQ beat an SMG with an with a avoid team fight composition. So. My, my concern is they're not going to have an opportunity to open up and find those star playmaking moments. Because I don't know if they're ever going to get a team fight if AHQ doesn't, doesn't apply to them. Yeah, and I think the key for AHQ is to stick to their guns. Because sometimes you see them lapse a little bit and fall into bad habits. Where if they just stick to the strategy of don't engage them, don't allow them to fight you, then I think they can take this pretty handedly. Whereas, I think we saw it last series too, right? They... They gave away the Krignak in the last game. I don't think that was totally intentional. I think that was just a mental lapse on their side once more. And I feel like they just need to avoid the mental lapses if they want to take this down. Yeah, it's... <clears throat> I'm thinking back to the draft from yesterday from AHQ. And they left open a bunch of holes. Right. And SMG didn't abuse them for it. So... If you're Flash Wolves and you were definitely watching that matchup, going into this draft number one, are you going to bring up the Krikknack? Because it looked lackluster, but I think only because of a lack of aggression from SMG. Or has AHQ kind of learned their lesson on that? And are they going to be bringing up Krikknack more? Giving that, giving that to Rush, who can still make really good plays on it? There's a couple of interesting draft things that we're going to learn in this first game. Well, Flash Wolves, for the entire season, were very consistently running a, a, an assassin jungler. That said, it was typically the Necroth or the Mura, so we'll see if Wayne is able, able to you know, bring out the more all-in assassin jungler in that Crick Neck. Now, we have the Ignis banned first off here, and they banned the Valheim from AHQ, so... HQ, I'm not sure if it's just them, but they have shown consistently that they very highly value the Valheim and don't want to give it up. And they envision, given their first pick, that the Valheim could be in the next rotation for Flash Wolves. And they ban it out. And now the Krikneck is available. Sun's going to flash his Wisp like he always does because he loves Wisp. But I imagine we're going to see Krikneck. Otherwise, they're putting themselves in a bit of a bind. Yeah. <clears throat> But at the same time, they did it yesterday, and they didn't care. And so, do you do you, do you attribute that to an SMG that looked uh, a little off their game, or is AHQ just really good at staring down Krikknack, and it doesn't look like it, and looks like they're going to grab the Roxy, which they played to pretty good effect yesterday. I like the way they set it up. Uh, I think that SMG could have abused it more, and could have put more pressure on it, but Roxy's still a pretty good neutral pick. Hmm, they do go for the Roxy. No... 
I would say that Roxy is probably Sun's best hero at the moment. He plays a lot of it on stream that I've seen, and he obviously showed in the final two games of yesterday's match to be able to pull that out. Now, Roxy is pretty weak to a Crick Neck because she can get completely bursted down. And we'll see if Flash Wolves decide to go for that. Flash Wolves, by the way, are another team that really favor the Fennec, and we've seen that quite a few times from them. And the Mina looks like it could be the pick here. We saw it banned completely. It was first banned every single game from SMG yesterday. So haven't seen the Mina in a while, but we could see it here from Flash Wolves. And that is a strong opening duo there. Mina and Crickneck. Yeah, never <laughs> in the current drafting meta, don't take your mage unless you really think you need your mage for some strange reason until your third, uh, like until your second rotation in the first half of the draft. You don't need to. Because as long as Liliana and Raz are both still up, taking taking the, the mage is just such a unnecessary risk. And in this situation, Flash Wolves get Mina Ferran, they get Wayne on the Cricknack, and now they've got pretty good team fighting. And we did see yesterday, there was a lot of issues with kind of having these squishy supports. It opened up into it opened up some very weird scenarios where we got uh, we were, we even got Alice games. Chognar, you know, fell a little flat. And Mina was basically permanently banned that entire time uh, for the or banned that entire series. So it does open up some new avenues with Mina going over to the side of Flash Wolves, where they will end up with a better tankier team fighting draft. The Crest is a good answer back, and you take your mage in second half rotation to guarantee you get one of the top two. Yep. Well. Top two outside of what everyone has considered Ignis as to be the top one, I suppose. But I see what you're saying here. And yeah, Crash is picked up. Crash was very heavily banned, particularly in the second half of drafts. But very solid pick here for HQ. Very different drafting from yesterday, actually. Because yesterday, they were favoring more squishy comps and damagey comps. And this time, they're switching it up a bit. I think they've realized that that's just such a risk, and they, they're. I, th I honestly think AHQ was surprised they got away with what they got away with in yesterday's games. Yeah, they're like, I just, can't believe they won was, that. <laughs> it, like it, all it took, like there were there were these moments, especially in game number four, where Hawk screws up one of his three big plays. Like he made three really great plays. He screws up any of those three, and the game turns completely against them, and it it hits a point of being almost unrecoverable. I think they've realized that they kind of managed to head game SMG with the with how they were playing their Cricknack and their Butterfly, and they and they're not going to get the same effect that a Flash Wolves, especially because Flash Wolves is a much stronger pure team fighting team. If they get into a team fight. Wayne is going to kill stuff, and he's going to do it really, really quickly. Yeah, and Flash Wolves is the king of just flipping a switch and completely wiping everyone out when you don't realize it happening. It's kind of beautiful to watch, actually, when everyone just commits to the fight and everyone in coordination, in unison, just jumps in and starts making plays. It's pretty nuts to see. Now, we have the Fennec band out here. And that is a hedge against the Crest Fennec tower killing strategy. And we all know that AHQ is very focused on the macro play, very focused on killing towers. So reasonable ban here for Flash Wolves in that regard. Malak banned out here from AHQ. I believe that's for to prevent the counter engage when there's a metamorphosis. But we'll see what uh, they decide to go for the last ban here. It looks like just a side lane control situation. You don't actually have that many side laners being banned out. You've actually only got one technically picked in the Roxy. So, you know, we haven't seen Xenial, we haven't seen Omen, none of those have been removed. A lot of this has been on the jungle pressure, especially because HQ has not picked their jungler. Uh, they have a couple of things I think they can lead back into, so I, I don't mind... Uh, those bands, but I think that those are pretty good target bands to kind of control what AHQ can can go with. There's a second sidelander ban, and now for Flash Wolves, Xenial's not a bad pick up here. Marge is not a bad pick up here. You have a couple of options because you can still get uh, you, you still have plenty of room to build out tankiness in your sideliners, and they're going to go with the Marja, which gives them some good, just solid damage and a good way to answer the the healing that'll come out of Roxy. 
Sun has been able to deal with marshes before, though, whether it's on Roxy or whether it's on Xenia. It's not even really the lane. It's really more about <clears throat> the team fighting, I think. Mm. I mean, like, Sun just beats pretty much everybody in lane, and they're like, we were, we were questioning whether or not Liang was just a better lane duelist than Sun. He might still be, but Sun is, Sun is currently showing it's almost League of Legends TSM effect. Mm. You can almost never... Or, up until this year, you could, for six years straight, you could never bet against TSM in the finals. You could never do it because they just, as a team, were really, really good at best of fives. Their management, their ownership, the players were trained really well on how to take best of fives um, mentally and also how to deal with long tournament formats. AHQ has that experience to the point where even if Sun wasn't necessarily playing as well as Liang, he is now proving that he is a much better marathon player and can handle the pressure going into a long series as well as a long tournament. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I like the Wonder Woman over the Yebeneth. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I totally like Wonder Woman. After what we saw uh, yesterday, even though it didn't win as many games for oh. SMG. Well, never mind. <laughs> Wait, who's their jungler? Wonder Woman? Uh, their jungler is... Wonder Woman, yeah. That's weird. Um, That's weird. What? That just got weird. Sun is a jungler? I, I just... What? Hello? No, no. It's gonna be Wonder Woman. It's just weird. <clears throat> it's... God, that's strange. Okay, I gotta think about that one for a minute. Uh, um, they have four warriors, basically. <laughs> I guess the idea is, is that Wonder Woman can still play a tank jungle with clear speed being okay. It's not really coming from the same assassin vein. As you would think, but it's really more about setting up the damage coming out from Hawk. It also makes your damage kind of low because you're looking at. Do you think they double went support? <laughs> yesterday? Yesterday they had the full just squishy comp. Now they have the full non squishy comp. But we saw in the past that this doesn't really work that well. That said, there's no marksman on the side of Flashwolf, so. They can kind of get away with this. Whereas yesterday, when well, SMG it, had... Remember when SMG had the big beefy comp and they got kind of yeah. buoyed around by multiple marksmen and mages? That's... HQ doesn't have to worry about that this game. But they never... But the, the thing about that is is you only get buoyed around by marksmen and mages if you're afraid of them. If you just find one good anchor pick, you just mob them with bodies. And I think AHQ is confident enough in their ability to just run them down even if there was a marksman, even if that last pick was like a Yorn or something, you wouldn't care if there was a marksman or if all, there was all that poke because, honestly, AHQ as a team is really confident in just diving a target. They will pick somebody and they will they will be like, okay, we're killing you. And they will fully commit to it. So I think in that sense, this composition is fine as long as they're dropping individual targets. Like, if you're dropping Wayne or Shishi, who are your squishier targets on this team, that's a fine, like, you can throw enough bodies at that if you're the side of AHQ. I don't, I don't strictly agree with it because the Wonder Woman is kind of a just in an awkward pick if you're adding that much tankiness. But at the same time, I'm not going to tell AHQ they can't because they have the skill to be able to pull off these unconventional compositions. As we get deeper into the tournament, I wonder if you use that next round up against J Team if you win, but. For now, you know, I think it's I think it's worth giving them the benefit of the doubt after yesterday's performance, and they've got a game or two to be able to experiment and then hard tack back if this isn't working. What I'm wondering is if they really wanted a beefy jungler, why didn't they just go Zephyrus? I I don't know why people are just sleeping <clears throat> on Zephyrus. It, it makes no sense. Like we we didn't get to talk about it because they switched off of of Lubu to the Kilgroth, and I've been saying, and you know, we've been talking about don't sleep on Lubu. He brings brings a lot to the table, but I don't know. I think teams just don't respect how good Zephyrus is with just with a tank item and a, and a damage item, how good he is at just pressuring a squishy. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, and I'm fully... I was thinking the exact same thing that Cheesy and Chad is saying. It's one of those solo queue drops, like, wait a second, no one's jungle. Oh, wait, okay, I guess Wonder Woman will jungle then. <laughs> In solo queue. And I'm actually kind of surprised that no one's helping Wonder Woman jungle. She's going to take a long time to get through uh, the way it is. But I guess it doesn't really matter as long as they all group up to help with the last buff. So that it doesn't get stolen off with the Crick Neck. They should be okay. But as it stands, Wayne himself <laughs> went for a curious route. Went straight from the blue to the red. 
or excuse me, red to the blue, just to make sure that he wasn't invaded himself, since all those beefy bodies are on HQ here. A little bit of a skirmish on, oh, pocket taking actually quite a lot of damage. Nice shining light there from Shishi, showing his prowess on that hero. And... Yeah, Fly Flash is going to win that 2v2. If I'm Hawkeye, I rethink that strategy. Yeah, maybe that's not the best idea to go after that. But, uh, looks like Sun had to go back a bit early. Missed a couple, missed a minion or two before he went back. Rush is about to hit four, so he can get those brace bracelets of submission. Help out some of these fights here. And this is just an interesting matchup in general. How will the beefy comp of them do? It looks like a jump in onto Jayjock from Wayne. Uh, isn't he able to secure the kill here, Jayjock? Kind of low, but still sticking around the area. And we'll see if these players can get up to level 4, you know, outside of the junglers, obviously. And looks like that was not stolen there by Sun. A bit early on the punish. Hero seeing quite a bit of damage. And this is an interesting matchup. Because Sun, because Roxy had that HP nerf here, uh, she will be more susceptible to dying to heroes. But here comes a jump in mm -hmm. from Wayne. Sun, can you survive? Oh, he put, gets a blazing shield. Actually, he actually managed to survive. It. And oh my goodness, heroes. And wait, heroes nearly dies himself there. Uh, Sun's actually afraid wow. to take these these minions, as you can see. Even though Wayne is backed off, Sun finally goes back and gets the minions. Meanwhile, here over in the dragon, or in the abyssal dragon, they're starting to take it down. But you know, beefy heroes don't really take it down that quickly. Can Wayne get there in time? Looks like it's just posturing here from Flash Wolves. So HQ is able to take it. They still are down in gold though. So we'll see how that works out. I would have said Sun was dead to rights, but I, I think they thought he was dead as well, and then. They don't feel comfortable fully committing to that play, which, honestly, that was your Kricknack moment. That's that level 4 gank we we expect out of these melee assassin junglers, and it tends to start the, the Kricknack snowball. It gets him through his boots and into having his Soul Reaver finished by about 5 minutes, or by or closer to 4 minutes. Now we're looking at, it's going to be a bit of a slower roll for him. And he can go back to that well of top lane, but now it's a lot more dangerous because Sun is going to have his ultimate. So you have to be worried about that. Uh, for, so far, Flash Wolves have done a pretty good job of matching AHQ's general aggression. But we are, we are seeing kind of the lack of damage for AHQ be a bit of a problem. I think Rush is cleared quickly enough that it's probably not going to end up being uh, an issue out of the out of the jungle. It's just they're going to need really good play out of Sun. Those Agnes graphs are going to be key for them to kind of just pick down an individual target because I don't really see anybody else setting that up. It, it also could be a similar situation to Game 1 of their last series. In which HQ just says we have beefy bodies, we're better at macro, so we're just not even trying to fight, and it's gonna we're gonna make it as difficult as possible for Wayne to find picks, and so maybe they don't even worry about that as far as trying to kill someone. Only when they really need to do so, they go for the team fights. That's not a bad start. Problem is, is they in that first game they had a marksman jungler, and they don't this time around. So that 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 macro pressure, that siege, isn't really there for them. Mm. Uh, at least just not in the same fashion. And that's going to be the kill on the sun. They managed to catch him out. Wayne went back to the top lane and eventually found what he couldn't get the first time around. And now hmm. it's setting up on an Abyssal Dragon. This will be a good setup for the side of Flash Wolves. Maybe they'll even catch out Rush. Dark Dominion is being used. There's a collapse in from the Marja. Here comes the slow. They're going to start things up. Stun is through. Bracelets of Submission will keep Rush alive, but they've forced out that ultimate... And you don't really care about burning a ghost walk too much if you're Ice Fang, but that bracelet's of submission should open up this Abyssal Dragon going to the side of Flash Wolves. Good job by Chaser to pull the Abyssal Dragon away. There was a pretty big window there for Flash Wolves to take it because, like we mentioned, Sun went down at a really poor time and the bracelet's of submission went up. But that said, Ron it has to pull the Dark Submission. There comes the, the Power Surge, and he goes down in a flash. No pun intended there. Hawk taking some damage, but he's going to survive through. This dragon's going to get least once more and looks like while we were talking about that heroes went in and decided to take down a tower because he could hawk in a bit of trouble takes a terrifying play here because a metamorphosis out from a lot of damage coming onto shishi here and they're trying to jump on him can they get the kill no they cannot ice fang himself meanwhile in a bit of trouble here comes the ghost walk there's an hs rum at the wrong time unfortunately ice fang able to somewhat bait that out and get away 
Yeah, and now they're going to go back to the Abyssal Dragon. This seems like a dangerous play because Wayne is going to be back at full health. They are calling Shishi to stop his back. They're looking to collapse onto this. They will have this in advantage. Here comes the Ice Fang into the back. Stun under Rush. Pull back in. Dark Dominion onto all of them. Here comes the damage coming up from Wayne. They haven't finished anybody. A good Marine submission will keep them in the fight, but the first one goes down. Rush is gone. Now we turn to J Jock. He'll be finished off as well. Wayne brings the damage, and they'll be able to pick up those two kills. But here comes Hawk. Hawk goes in. Explosive KO to get really deep into enemy territory. Ice Fang eats a little bit more damage they'll be able to walk away from that all members from the side of flash wolf safe and now wayne will slowly do this abyssal drag and he'll pull it get a little bit of damage maybe he's actually just gonna back off because uh he doesn't have any teammates yeah hawk and chaser were coming up there bit of a misjudgment there from ahq bad decision making trying to go back for that dragon not realizing that four members were there and ready to go for flash wolves to contest and in the end they pay for it now down over two thousand gold and they're not really making it up for it with their macro either, as after that pick onto Sun and just in general heroes getting more of the side monster camps, he is at a significant advantage in that gold count there. Uh, looks like a bit of a skirmish here in the middle. Chaser pops in Nature's Realm, taking some damage, uh, unable to heal back up, but he's going to be okay in the end. That said, that's the major resource used at the moment, and it's going to be about 30 to 40 seconds before it's back up. So this could be an opportunity once more for the Flash Wolves. J-Doc going to see if he can't leash this away to prevent things from happening. And in the meantime, lots of members setting up a <laughs> nice little bush party here in the center. Yeah, a lot of damage on the run, but that's a pull. Oh, Dark Hawk. Dominion Hawk is dead. He gets obliterated by Shishi and Wayne. Now the pressure is on to oh, Rush. Shishi. Gets a good bracelet to submission. Shishi should have one more dash coming up soon. Eats a little bit more damage. Gets into the bush. Blinks over the side. And Wayne has been dueling out with Rush. Oh. But he's going to get pulled in. No, finished off by J-Jock. It was a little unfortunate right there. But at the end of the day, it will end up being a two for two. And uh, you'll, you'll take what you can get if you're... Uh, you know, Flash Wolves in a scenario like that because you really shouldn't well, have won that fight. Yeah, actually, it was a two for one for Flash Wolves, but we saw a solo kill from Sun onto Heroes over on the side. Ah, oh, that's what that was. I was wondering what the second death was. Right, and that was crazy because Sun should have less gold than him. He had. He has less gold even now after that kill. So that was just a straight outplay. It probably involved some sort of Agni's grasp on his side, able to take that down, but. Yeah, I mean that that could that fight could have gone better for either team. So in the end, you you uh, think of it as you know, if it's unfortunate for both sides, and it's not unfortunate for either side, right? <laughs> in any case, still two thousand gold lead here for Flash Wolves if they maintain that. But that kill on the heroes is pretty big. That allows for Sun to start bullying rather than being the bull being bullied out of that lane, and that could really reshape the geometry of this map. As it looks like Flash Wolves have. Switch things up, trying to get the matchup of Heroes onto Chaser instead. And, oh, it looks like we're having another switch up. Okay, so it looks like HQ switching up to match things back up in order. I think at the end of the day, Flash Wolves is... Oh, Chaser's caught. He's going to get pulled back in. Starts to take Dark some Dominion. damage. Dark Dominion is in there, but he hasn't popped the Nature's Realm. He's holding it. No, he doesn't have it. He's dead. He's gone. And Shishi in the bush is going to be able to catch Hawk. He's going to get slowed down. Reiki shot comes in. What a perfect play for a perfect angle from the side of Flash Wolves. Now they've got the metamorphosis out of j -Jock. He's eventually going to need to back off. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Heroes is taking Sun down. He's going to be caught out. A little bit more damage. Pull back in. Dark Minions back up. Shishi dives forward. Heroes taking up the tower for his squad. One more Reiki shot. Send j -Jock running. And that is going to be Flash Wolves picking up a great series of kills there. And to be honest, I wasn't uh, that afraid for Heroes. I figured he was just off to farm, but man, that was a great rotation in the mid. We talked about it time and time again. Flash Wolves are amazing at taking these team fights, and if you give them any any whiff of the opportunity to take a team fight, then they will take it. And AHQ unfortunately gave them more than they even needed and gifted them those opportunities. All right, now we've got Flash Wolves. They should be able to start to put more uh map pressure down just just from just from how heroes has been playing he's also reaching kind of monster mode for a kill Garoth. he's getting that third item once he has that yoga's edge it's going to be kind of difficult for i want to say anybody to really burst through the healing he's going to be outputting so that's good for the side of flash tools now they put a little bit of pressure onto jay jack there's that yoga's edge picked up lots of heck of these picked up for the Liliana, a little bit of damage, a little bit of pullback in, no full commitment, and that's a lot of free damage that Heroes gets to output onto the members of AHQ. Now, Ron takes a 
couple of power surges to the face is being slowed down there's going to be the metamorphosis it doesn't really lock him down brace the submission as wayne jumps forward but it doesn't catch anyone and now ice fang looking to slow them down it is a dangerous prospect for them to pressure here onto the raz looks like they're just going to take a buff for their trouble i'm really impressed with the oh rush, oh, rush, rush is low rush is caught oh. ghost walk under ice fang picks him off now wow. the pressure onto chaser he pops the nature's realm should be able to do a little bit of damage keep ice fang getting too squirrely and they will have to back off there and heroes is very low got pulled in by sun agony's grasp is used ron waiting there in the bush they're gonna be able to pull in sun dark dominion into the shining light blinding light pulled through that's a huge amount of damage the whole team collapses reiki shot for good measure just to make a point and she she and wayne will start up this dragon now chaser steps forward does use a branching out looking for a play redwood rush forward the dragon is still very low somebody could walk in and finish this wayne is waiting off of the wings for his burst opportunity she she dealing with hawk at least trying to keep his attention there's another dark dominion ron steps back steps forward one more time wayne will be able to secure the buff and the nature's realm used very little effect I am just shaking my head right now because Flash Wolves, their execution is just picture perfect every single time. If they didn't they didn't chain those abilities perfectly against Sun earlier on, that's a Roxy. She can do quite a bit of damage if she's able to turn on her wildfire and actually use her abilities. And it's if everything wasn't perfect, they don't take it out. They play perfectly with low health bars around that Abyssal Dragon. Even though HQ was perfectly healthy, they just... They baited them into a corner and got the Dark Dominion off perfectly. Ron is playing this extremely well. Jjack, he was able to take the Dark Blessing in the end, so that's one thing to HQ's side. But just just the knowledge of how to take team fights is just immaculate here from Flash Wolves. I was about to mention earlier, when they got a ton of damage on those two members, like you're mentioning about three minutes ago, they didn't commit because they knew they just used some cooldowns. And if the return engage was there, they would have all died. And it's a, such a weird feeling. It's so crazy to see someone just leave a fight when you're up, you know, a couple of uh, half, half health health bars at the moment, and it's just insane to see their their ability to know the situation. But that said, big uh, lasso onto multiple members. There comes a brace of submission, and down goes Way. There is a clapback here from AHQ, and likely Rod's going to follow as well because she she isn't able to contribute to this fight. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, we see a duel here between what looks to be Chaser and Ice Fan. Can Ice Fan take her down? Does she have the Ghost Walk available? Oh no, goes in with the Redwood Rush and the extra take her out. This is AHQ coming back into the match. They're still down four and a half thousand gold, but still making this work regardless. Yeah, an opportunity opened up through. Just a good play out of Hawk and Rush to bait in Wayne. Wayne does need to be a little bit more careful. Has gone with a little bit of an awkward build. And with a Frost Cape, instead of going deeper into his damage, so he still doesn't have his Fenrirs, and that would already be done by now. So if we think about the amount of damage that he wasn't able to do to Rush, Rush would have instantly popped if he'd gone full damage. So a build adaptation being heroes? a little bit of a problem, but here goes Heroes stepping forward. They don't have any anti-healing for him, so he will be able to bait them a little bit further forward. Sun is going to show up. They cancel out the Dark Ooh, Slayer, wow. so that is going to reset. So a great play there from Heroes to just put enough threat on the Flash Wolves to make them think that he was going to be able to walk forward and steal that away. And Rush, still very low, did not end up backing after that immediately happened, so almost got picked off by Shishi on the side. And now the map is basically reset. No advantage for the side of AHQ, no major objective taken after that rebuttal from them and the kills they were able to pick up. Yeah, and they're still done. About the same amount of goal that they were after everything started. So this is just... Well, unfortunate for Flash Wolves, but also crazy that, or fortunate for HQ, but uh, amazing play from Flash Wolves to be able to salvage the situation thus far. Another duel here in the bottom of the map between Heroes and Sun. And looks it's like a it's a bait. Wayne is waiting in the wings. Or, or, or no, it doesn't come in. <laughs> Sun is literally running towards two members, including a jungler, because he ain't as scared. <laughs> He's, I could take him. It's fine. But Sun shows no fear. Yeah. Never, never, never let your enemies see you blink. He, first, uh, first him in the Church of Sun. Well, he listened to your advice on Rank Breaker, and he said, "You have Rank Breaker. I have more armor than that." Yo, <laughs> the math, the math. <laughs> it's like it's been a lot. Like that's that literally the first thing I saw when I started watching um, professional AOV was like, "Why do they still build Rank Breaker this late in the game?" And Muramasa from Heroes, it's beautiful. It's scaled. We're past fifteen minutes. They'll never build a Rank Breaker past past ten minutes. Um, 
Anyways, all that shenanigans aside, we do see more pressure. Rush has done a really good job on this Wonder Woman of just kind of being enough of a threat to get people to focus him and then getting off a good bracelet of submission. It's had varying effects just because of how much damage Wayne can possibly do. But again, I think that adaptation into the Frost Cape was a problem for Wayne. I don't think they needed that control. And I think it might come back to bite them if they lose another team fight or two. Well, it's just inconsistent, right? Because if you're... Oh, that was oh a what a pull! Wait, Rush, did you last. blow on that? He goes over the wall. Yeah. He uses the bracelets of submission early. So now there is a window, and we do see heroes flanking up on the side. He's going to run right oh! at Hawk, and Hawk destroys him! What a punch! What a knockout! He just looks him straight in the eye and gives him one on the chin instantly sends him wobbling and straight to the ground and now their members of flash wolves are on the run even with those team fight ultimates down or at least with just the braces of submission down and a window open for ahq they are now on the offensive they are on the offensive but they only have taken down this one tower in the mid lane the map isn't quite opened up enough for them to go onto this dark slayer or the abyssal dragon and this is the power of the macro that flash wolves have actually shown better skill in thus far and it's causing problems for AHQ. They don't have the opening in order to take either of these major objectives. Now, anyway. Right, we now are seeing the Fenrir's finished for Wayne. So that's, that's a big pickup for yeah. him. Especially because like, of the beefy th members of AHQ. He needs that extra damage once they're below 50%. And also yeah. because there's a heal. There's multiple ways that they can stay alive. He needs a way to finish members off once they get low. But I was going to say his build is very kind of inconsistent because if he wants to stay in fights by picking the the uh, frost cape then he also should pick the muramasa right because then you're going against beefier members but that said looks like there's a couple of players so there's a 2v3 here from ahq trying to help take out or help with this fight situation but hawk is taken up by shishi in the meantime shishi trying to run away not sure if she can get away but wow the dodge onto the metamorphosis she's going to be healing onto this red buff as well in the meantime just hanging out here as she's just waiting for her dash and she dashes double over the wall gets out of there gets out of dodge oh my goodness shishi a little bit of a mistake here my my opinion from HQ to not be able to take her out but wow that was just as well as you could play that from Shishi. it's good to see Shishi back that's the play that flash wolves has been missing oh, for a while and another stun damage on a rush oh. that's huge damage that comes out from the two mages and they will kill chaser at some point it is only a matter of time what an amazing setup meanwhile heroes is basically taking this on his own a reiki shot is going to hit jjock on the side they're going to grab the Sun dragon's son to just to its credit, he managed to grab the Dark Blessing and, and make this a lot longer of an affair than it should have been. But Flash Wolves will secure themselves the teamfight objective. They don't have enough to be able to just end the game here, but they will be able to set up pressure or stun. A little bit extra damage. Wayne's looking for it. Stepping forward. Should be able to let them take a couple of towers just off of this teamfight pressure. The Drake, <laughs> I think, has still been held for the side of AHQ. And there's Dark a Dominion. great Dark Dominion wow. pulling it on a Hawk. He's gone now. Looking at JJ. Oh I'm my god. Off. In the blink of an eye. And that's wow. going to be way wow. grabbing his... his uh, Blade of Eternity is picked up. All of the members from AHQ are dead. Even if someone showed up, they'd have to kill six members. It's over. Ron won the game at the end there with this sick Dark Dominion onto Hog. That forced j -Duck to try to save him. And j -Duck that entire time was trying to build up toward the Metamorphosis. Was unable to get enough rage in order to get that one off. And I gotta say that Ron was by far the MVP because he was making so many plays with Mina. It was just so oppressive to see. And I feel like AHQ has to take a page out of SMG's book and ban Mina out of there. Or Cricknack. I feel like I feel I feel like Mina did more for them than Cricknack. That was just insane. Mi that said, Mina won them. Mina won them those fights in a lot of ways, but only because there was so much high burst damage. Yeah, and I think you honestly you could have well, you could have banned Cricknack and first picked Mina, and you and mm -hmm. I don't see Flash Wolves taking Roxy from you. That's true. Well, okay. Let let's put. I'll put it this way: Mina won within the game. And Cricknack won before the game started because he forced out this bizarre draft from AHQ. He forced out the beefy draft, and the beefy draft didn't have enough playmaking potential in order to fight against Flash Wolves. Sure. I mean, I, again, I the Roxy, I think, as good of a pick as it is for Sun, as powerful as he can be on it, don't pick that for him first. 
because most teams aren't going to take that from you. Pick something higher priority in your first slot, and then, especially from first pick side, then take your mage and the Roxy. Take Roxy second rotation. Because that could have, like, again, if you ban Kricknack, that's Mina. Or if you ban Mina, that's Crick. Like, you didn't need to give them both of those fairly high priority characters. And then also give them an even matchup across the mid lane with the mage. It's just, it's too easy to get lulled into the old way of drafting still. Mm. Like, I think teams are still not fully through, especially because solo queue is the old way of drafting too. Yeah. So. That, 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 to me, kind of looks like a little bit of draft jitters, a little bit of a draft mistake from AHQ. We'll see if they kind of match it up. My problem is, is yesterday's drafting didn't look great for me, AHQ, either. It looked kind of middle of the road. Like, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Things were kind of 50-50 even, or maybe even, like, 60-40 in favor of SMG. And Flash Wolves have just shown that they have a pretty good sense of how they want to draft this matchup. If AHQ stumble, we could see Flash Wolves 3 of them. Well... At least for AHQ's side, I think that if they're going to first pick something for Sun, he needs to dominate the matchup, and he did not do so against heroes on the nope. Killgrath. It was reasonable, he got that one solo kill, but that's about it. And again, part of that was, like you mentioned, they let the Kricknack through, so it made it much harder to dominate that side matchup, where Kricknack, he is <laughs> pretty universally known at this point as being the DS lane killer, right? It doesn't matter how tanky you are, he's going to be able to burst right through you. So yeah, yep. it's gonna, and for Sun's sake, they need to probably ban out that Krikna because we take a look at some of these highlights here. I mean, this 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 right here is the example of why. Like Mina Mina sets that up, but just the amount of damage that I think Wayne does there is just kind of kind of absurd and even if mina isn't there landing that dark dominion rush was still kind of off on the side and we saw how, how squishy rush was in general this was a good example of them collapsing onto wayne before anybody could really do anything but look at that play for i want to oh my goodness <laughs> oh no, no no ron made some very very sick plays on the mina but at the same time i don't think he should have gotten like they, they shouldn't have gotten mina kricknack so just one of those situations where Let's see what age she kind of answers back with. Looks like we're taking a break. Um, we didn't New broadcast much. format. All right. <laughs> see you guys in five minutes then. In buff, we trust. Buff, Neng Liang Ying Liao, Han Hua Qing Su, Shuang Xiao Deng Chang. Kai Chu de Shi Hou, Yo Air Wave Sai Shou. 随时随地让你觉醒一下 
We trust. Buff, 能量饮料，含花青素，双效登场。What's up, guys? Welcome back to the GCS. This is the semifinals of the playoffs. It is Flash Wolves versus AHQ. Flash Wolves just took game number one, and we took a break for some reason. We are back. IMD2 with me is the source. And what do we look for here coming into game number two, source? Uh, probably a bit of a drafting retack. Uh, I was mentioning towards the end. There was no reason draft wise to give up Mina Kreknak. The Valheim ban was not worth it. Uh, I would say. I'd say even even if you let the Valheim through, there are other uh, answers to being able to handle that. So no reason to kind of make that sacrifice. So we'll see how things shift up as we swap the sides. Another thing to keep in mind is how is AHQ going to enable Sun? Because in that game, they really didn't. Up against SMG, they did a really good job of changing up the matchups, making it really difficult for the Yang to find that 1v1 and not just beat Sun, but kind of demoralize him. When you take a 1v1 matchup like that, a lot of it comes down to how well... Uh, one, do you get your hero ahead, but two, how far can you set your opponent behind? Don't let Sun lose that matchup. Sun tends to be very key for them, which means you got to put Rush, a proactive jungler, to back him up and find that level one, that that level four gank. And Flash Wolves, flirting with danger, about to let the Crick nap through. Yeah, weird bands coming through here. So Flash Wolves, they knew they wanted to take a jungler first, which means they banned the Mina because they don't want to give the Mina in the second rotation or the first rotation for HQ. And similar bands here from HQ to the last game. And then there's the Deniel ban, which kind of throws me off. Obviously, Sun has played that pretty well. But in any case, Sun doing his traditional show of the wisp. Just put the fear in his opponent's heart. And is Rush actually going to pick <clears throat> Kraknek? Have you seen Rush and Kraknek yet? Uh, I think we have. I'm sure he can play it. Rush is a good enough jungler that that shouldn't be their issue. And this is... I don't mind giving up the Kraknek when you get a Lindus if you are Flash Wolves. 
anybody else, then I, I start to question it because Nashville is just very, very good at opening up that team fight scenario. But I still think it is a disadvantage. I would say it's, you know, pretty close. Maybe 55-45, uh, something along those kinds of, of, of margins between Flash Wolves and AHQ, advantage AHQ. Um, but it's not that big of a detriment that you've run into a problem. AHQ still heavily prioritizing their Valheim, which in this scenario hasn't hasn't really affected them. But we'll, also, we'll see what ends up getting banned next rotation because, again, I think that they're still overvaluing the Valheim. They have done pretty well with it, though, especially because Chaser feels pretty comfortable. But, but By no means are they bad at it, but I think they put it too high in their draft priority. It's very true. I think they'd still get it lower in their draft priority. Um, I, I was going I think to they say, would still end up having it. I was going to say, by the way, before they switched from the Ebena to the Crest, I've almost never seen a hero take such a 180 in professional play where Yebinus was waiting every single game we saw him in and we were yelling at teams for not picking him up, picking him or banning him and now he's just losing every single game. <laughs> I've never seen such a quick 180 on a character. It's kind of nuts. Yeah, he went from god tier to too easy to beat up. And I think that was the thing about Yebinus is his numbers never really changed so once everyone learned how to beat him and how to play up against him it got really really easy to bait him into poor positioning scenarios and now he's just not as good right it's kind of like they gave him the malak treatment in a way where they learned how to play around what he's able to do and it's like well he has abilities that are this long if you don't get messed up by those abilities you'll be perfectly fine all right so we have the ban on the croth here which if you're wondering at home sometimes we see teams flex the Lindus into a lane, and then pick an Assassin Jungler anyway, so AHQ is kind of hedging against that. And because there's so many DS lane heroes available anyway, they feel like it's not really the most impactful to ban one out. What do you think? I'm fine with that. Be that's that's the other reason why the Lindus doesn't feel as bad as it would if you'd say yielded Violet for Kricknack. Um, because Lindus can flex that in into the lane you you open up some more scenarios and here here's where i would love to see a zephyrs from flash wolves add that zephyrs add that dive give liviana a dive buddy flex the lindus into a lane if you want to you don't necessarily have to but the nice thing is is you have that possibility after you see the next pick coming out from ahq and so far they're they haven't shown one strategy in their bands but they haven't gotten themselves that many tanky like that many tanky pickups here. They're pretty all in in terms of their dive. So ban something else tanky right now. Pick the uh, Zaphis, and you only have to find one more side lane or not two. All right. Well, let's see what Flash Wolves decide to ban here. They went for the support, seeing that AHQ doesn't really have a support quite yet, and they go for the second one. Just. I think this is kind of shots in the dark from Flash Wolves. <laughs> Just, ooh, maybe they want this, maybe they want this support. We'll make it slightly harder for them. Obviously, Alice and Annette can both be pretty useful. So we'll see what HQ decides to go for in the end. Crash has also been taken away from them, and that's like the first thought I had of <clears throat> to compliment this team from AHQ. So, uh, since, well, Flash Wolves actually can, can flex onto a support here because you can play Crash in the sideline. So what is the priority here for AHQ? Do they go for an extremely strong, strong side laner to prevent, potentially, a support being picked out here from Flashfall so they can bully a potential DS lane crush? Or do they lock in the support now? Mm, you lock in your support. You hold your last pick as a counter pick for Sun. Hmm, so it looks like... Yeah. It looks like Flash Wolves squeezing out the Alice and Annette has proved to be a big deal here because the Pyrrha... It's not very strong at the moment as far as being that nice support hero. But it does allow you to have a nice early game because that early game healing is what keeps players in and that allows them to potentially take objectives whereas the opponents, they have a harder time trading out damage. So... Yeah, <clears throat> and this also... It gives you a nice defensive counter engage, but you still need to find a really good tank here. And now I'm concerned that... You might not have one, which means you have to put Chaser onto whatever that tank is. You need to put Sun onto the Valheim because you want Sun to have playmaking because Xenio's off the board. And if you're going into a Roxy, 
you're playing with fire, you can still do it, but it, it starts to get very difficult. And I don't know about that teamy, but I like the Roxy pick away. Just take that away from him. And looks like it is going to be A Jungle lumber. Lindus support lumbar. I don't mind it, but I'm not super convinced. Like the Roxy is the right pick. Take that away from the side of AHQ. Take that off their, their number of possibilities and make the be a squishier comp. But still, uh, that lumber is a little weird. I'm trying to think about what... I... Lumber is a strange hero to begin with because he's kind of half engaged, half protect the carry hero. So, well, they go for that in the end. And HQ says, all right, you take the Roxy. We'll take the Fishman, Kilgroth. And I imagine that's going to be on Sun. And Chaser's going to be playing the Valheim. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I, that's... That is a good answer to find Sun something that lets him win the matchup, lets him kind of carry, gives him some of the, the gravity he's been looking for. You don't have as much of pressure coming out jungle-wise, so Heroes is going to be left to kind of deal with things on his own. Wayne will be focused on the bottom half of the map. Rush can be focused on getting Sun ahead. So if you're Heroes, you need to be very careful. The Lumber is an interesting pick just because it's actually going to set up a lot of zone control, and there aren't a lot of ways to really engage past it. Just because Hawk, although his mobile, kind of is short-range mobility. Chaser is mobile, but he has to run in a straight line. Jayjock is not mobile at all, and Sun has to dash through, and then even with his crowd control, though, he could get isolated. So you lay down that ultimate from Lumber, and you take a pretty big swath of area that AHU doesn't want to fight in. I probably give the draft advantage to AHQ, considering the fact that they're going to own the top lane and theoretically the jungle. And they've picked up pretty strong lanes across the board. The team fight is still definitely in the favor of Flash Wolves, but this feels AHQ leaning because they're going to be able to enable Sun, and they've gotten the Crick Knack, which is going to have a good time up against a lot of those targets. I just see Ron getting beat up a lot because that's what happens to Lumber. You just kind of you're up there and you get smacked on. Yeah, <laughs> and I, he's not going to be able to make nearly the plays he made last game on Lamina because the Earth Splitter is such a long animation that you're not able to catch people out as easily if they're able to land good metamorphosis and earth splitters which could be a combo in and of itself then flash wolves can take these fights but if not they don't really have the playmaking other than those two abilities i mean unless he's literally a god mm. which could happen like this could be the secret pick from ron we just don't know about i doubt it but anything possible yeah, and Rush on this Crick Neck is going to be a big deal. If Rush can control the game, which, yeah, obviously, <laughs> you can say that about everyone, but Crick Neck is one of those heroes who definitely can control the game, and it's going to be an incumbent on him to make something happen here. Uh, heroes versus Sun is going to be favoring heroes at the moment because Wildfire is a good ability. And Sun's going to go ahead and go back here, and we'll see how this develops because, you know, Sun is really good, but Heroes has shown excellent play for a lot of this. And oh, GH Yacht gets stunned up, eats a little bit of TC and damage, will be able to heal himself, and there's an another crowd control effect to keep Jayjock there. Uh, so that's kind of the problem with having the Lindus jungle. Until she's there with her red buff, she's not going to do as much. I Obviously, oh wait, no, we have a gank up in the top lane. Looks like Crest is going to jump away. Starts to take some significant damage from Rush, and... Uh, very much so about rush controlling Ron. the game. It's going to be a matter. Ron needs some extra damage because being a lumbar is not having a good time. That's one more power surge to the face. The, a little the bit of action lumber, across the board, but even though he's he's his name is lumber and he's a literal rock, he takes way too much damage because he relies on his passive. And it's a passive. If you guys don't know, it's called protect. It's kind of the stupid stupidest passive name you ever heard. But what what happens is if you are with if you're near an ally, you both get armor and magic defense. That means if he's scouting out alone, he's very vulnerable to just poke coming out here from HQ. And all five members of HQ, they are serious about taking this dragon. Are they able to get it? They get it with ease. And they're going to be chasing members as well. Ron taking a, couple, a bit of damage here from Chaser. Both the DS laners are in this bottom lane. Looks like a bit of miscommunication as Chaser's going to have to go back into that top lane to match out heroes. Uh, they're probably going to miss out on that wave if they're not quick enough. And that's going to be a, kind of a big deal here as they the 
what they got oh, from the, the flank on the J Jock. They knock him up. They need a little bit more damage. Pulled him with the Agony's Grasp. He oh, didn't go down a bit. Oh, what a massive hawk comes out of Hawk. What a push. What a combo. He gets a little bit more damage. They've got heroes super low. He'll heal through. But what a setup. And now they manage to get. Wait, no. They get Wayne. Shishi. Shishi finishes off Wayne. Or Rush. Huh? I'm so confused. <laughs> Rush, Rush dove in. Rush dove in okay. and got killed by. Uh, Ice Fang and Shishi. I, I was, I thought it was. I was like, oh yeah, Wayne is on the Crick Knack. This is Wayne's Crick Knack. No, no, no. It was, well, it was Rush who, who was, jumped over the wall and got killed. <laughs> I was looking at the 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 message on the screen, and of you know, as always, it's very, very late. <laughs> so I was like, oh, he just died. Like, wait, no, that was from before. And it turned out Rush has died as well. So good job by Wayne to even things out there. But oh my goodness, Hog just just pushes back the entire team of Flash Wolves, making up for the fact that j -Jock got a little bit caught out there. And, you know, the bros, Hawk and j -Jock, always a pair. You know, sometimes it's not the support that supports you, it's you that supports the support. Yeah, that almost set up really well for them, but that's going to be the Earth Splitter on the Hawk. A full dive in, but they're going to get stunned up and start to take significant Hawk? damage. Hawk? Hawk dives really, really deep. Flicker out. Get one kill. Is he going to get away from the oh! auto attack? I'm following him. It chased him. A minion auto attack. <laughs> that minion auto attack followed him to the ends of the goddamn earth <laughs> and brought him down. Like, it was just, you could watch it in slow motion. His life flashed before his eyes. I didn't think he was going to die to that minion auto attack either. It seemed like he had, obviously he had very, very little health, but there was, you could see the green, right? It wasn't like Yo, it was... Caster, caster, minions, OP. Those things are deadly. Those things will destroy you. So we do oh. see, uh, okay, so this I don't mind, but it's too early from Ron. Throw down the Earth uh, the earth Splitter really, like, preemptively to take a zoning position and to just make it so somebody can't get into the fight. But it was too early because they didn't have enough members there. They couldn't really set that up. But, uh, again, the, the Lumber hasn't felt bad. It just hasn't felt great yet. I don't know. I'm gonna go all the way and say it's felt bad. <laughs> it, it's not bad bad yet it's look at the slumber it's one one and one it's fine but that's gonna be another objective going over uh -huh. the side of ahq they'll take that with basically no contesting from the side of flash wolves ron he needs to get out of there he eats a little bit of free damage but nothing to write home about and now we see the members of flash wolves looking for another setup onto jj yeah, the tra they're being very patient, hanging behind this wall here, trying to get that, but... Oh, J-Jock went too get far. j Jock's already gone too far. The collapse is uh -oh. in. They've got him. So what are they going to use? Earth Splitter to zone them out. They get a knockout. Nature's up. Rally? They don't actually want to commit to this completely over the wall. Nature's Hawk. Rally comes through. There's going to be the Metamorphosis. Hawk could be the transfer. Rush. Turn, but it's Rush. He goes 2D button of the tower. He gets caught trying to get back over the wall. Now we see the pressure possibly on the sun. No full commitment from the side of flash wolves they are going to chase him down but this is probably just going to result in a buff steal and the members from ahq will slow play this no they want to take this fight they are going to stick around here and the sun buff goes over to sun yeah miscommunication there from ahq rush going in at the time he went in or at least a half second before that it seemed like a good idea to go and jump but that didn't oh my god wayne is getting put jumped oh, on my son on the way auto attacks are chasing he's got the movement speed but he can't catch him oh, the this is just too fast that does mean she has to go back now, and she does have her own jungle to go through, but there needs to be better communication here from AHQ in these team fights because Rush, like I mentioned, he was okay for a moment to go in there, but once the Metamorphosis came out and his backline was getting dope upon, it was bad timing for him. That said, Rush trying to go into Sushi, but 1v3 not going to make much happen. Here comes the Earth Splitter, just going to put the, the fear back into him. Taste it's trying. just a zoning tool. It's really just a zoning tool, but I do want to note that I think heroes hit... Uh, hit Sun with the shield, and that was the slow that saved Wayne. I just, I just wanted to note that that could very much be a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> that that Agni's grasp animation, Sun too quick saw him stopping to set up that play. Pops his ultimate Gore Lord and walks away. And that's actually going to be the first time of the game going down in bottom. Chaser has been kind of beaten up on Ice Fang. This has been an uneventful bottom lane as it's, a lot of this has been rotations and fights around the dragon. Now we see angling towards the top half of the map for the side of flash wolves they're going to totally kill j jock stun j jock damage. doesn't care he just Another walks forward <laughs> they're not willing to commit they don't feel they have enough damage which is a fair criticism at this stage of the game that is a mr stabby build out from wayne so he's going to be lacking that additional attack speed and is going into his rank breaker so not going to have that extra damage now they're looking at this abyssal dragon they should be able to get this 
If a little bit more damage shows up, Rush could go in and steal this, but it will be grabbed by Flash Wolves. We'll take their first objective of the game and kind of balance out the gold a bit. Yeah, and through all of this back and forth, AHQ is barely holding on to about an 800 gold lead. Oh, goes back up to over a thousand here, but not the biggest deal for them at the moment. They're going to be switching their silent liners for the moment. And it's kind of interesting to see Jjock. He's kind of playing like a tanky style Pura, where he realizes if the entire team blows all their cooldowns on him, then it leaves the rest of the team to go in and finish them off, including Rush on that Crick Neck. So interesting play style here from Jjock, just trying to be that damage sponge, even playing as what is normally considered a squishier support. Mm -hmm. Possible engagement here on the sun. Are they going to be able Agnes to catch grasp. him? Also, Heroes pulls in Jjock. Has Ooh. the Agnes Grasp, but will get shut down. Oh, Shishi. And it looks like there were two possible fights on the side of the map. Shishi's Shishi. not scared. Looking at this as a possibility, d does go back in, is waiting for somebody to back him up. There's going to be heal up from Jjock. So they'll be above half health and not as much in that danger zone. But still, Shishi's showing that his damage is definitely there and they need to be careful because they have not built up a lot of magic defense. Haven't seen a whole lot from Rush this game. It feels like he hasn't had the impact that he, we've needed to see from him. And the, the the rest of the team is what's winning the game. And that potentially needs to change if they're going to finish this one out. Sun just trying to be a nuisance here. Attracting two members over and then getting out before anything quite happens here. Shishu holding down this mid lane by, him, by his lonesome. Being completely competent in that as Chasers continuing just to be a thorn in Ice Fang's back. Has to pop the Metamorphosis, only catches Jjock here. Jjock does pop the Essence of the Windshield to get out of dodge, but it looks like they're fine. Oh my god, Hawk is very, very deep, trying to go into Shishi. Misses the Power Surge, which means he has no energy at the moment. And a strange fight over the Spirit Sentinel is going to lead to nothing. And looks like everyone's backed off. That said, look at where our, our DS leaders are. We have Roxy on the HQ side and we have Sun on the Flash Hole side. Yeah, realizing you can't really do a whole lot. Heroes did look to proxy at the wave. It's going to get slowed down by Sun, but he should be fine to walk away from that. And so far, there's been a lack of global pressure by the side of Flash Wolves. They haven't been able to make any ma major team Ice fights Fang? get going. Ice Fang, he might die for this. Has to jump away. Will get healed up. But Chaser and Jjock will be able to drop another tower. So continuing to make their way around the map and lay in that additional pressure. And so far, Sun, he hasn't... Brawn as much aggression as we normally <laughs> expect of him. There's going to be a knock-up onto Jjock. More stuns come through, but they don't want to commit. They have used this combo on Jjock multiple times without willingness to commit onto more onto the targets. If if you're not going to kill Jjock, stop hitting him with skills. I like that Ron isn't afraid to use his Earth Splitter, though, because there hasn't really been a chance this entire game. And we could have gone this entire game without seeing this entire uh, one Earth Splitter, but he's like, he kind of knows that, too. So he's like, I'm just going to throw it out when I feel like it. <laughs> and they're getting this. But this is an Enraged and Abyssal Dragon. That's a huge objective taken here. And the Dark Blessing goes over to Rush as well. So all of a sudden, HQ went from barely winning to this game to they could start snowballing at this moment. Yeah, there's been a slowdown from the side of Flash Wolves. They have not been able to find a team fight. Haven't really been able to find much of a pick. Every time they've gone forward, it's basically been on the Jjock, and they've been unwilling to commit everything in there for a fear of getting abused for it. But we could see Great Metamorphosis comes through. It is going to get some damage on the Jjock, but the Earth Splitter doesn't oh. connect. That's a lot of damage on the Hawk as well. Yeah, so Pop is supposed to get out of there, too. Still, they're, they're still a little scared. I think that there's space for them to extend a bit more without being punished for it, but they'll catch out Jjock. Now it comes to Nature's Rally. Uh, not again. Wayne is Wayne has been very very conservative with with his his engagements, and I think it's gonna start to. I, I think Flash Wolves are gonna start to run out of steam at this rate. That said, the fact that he hasn't died yet has allowed them to not get snowballed into oblivion. That's one thing in their favor, and they have chased off AHQ for the majority of this buff here. I said AHQ has opened up a 3,000 gold lead to their side, so not the, the best win here as they're able to take this mid, this mid tower at the very end <clears throat> of their buff. So, AHQ opening up the map, they still have all nine of their towers. This Dark Slayer could be the next target up here for AHQ, and Jjock just kind of... Playing a little bait here, a little bait games. I'll come to the Earth Splitter once more, but Ron is just getting beat up like a ragdoll. Yeah, and they're not hitting more than one target with it, so every time it hits somebody, Jjock just throws Essence of the Windshield on them, and they're gone. So that, that, that skill is basically being traded out for an item activation. Right. Every time. And I believe that the cooldown is longer than the 30 second cooldown for Essence of the Wind, so... 
it's not really working out that well for Flash Wolves. The problem is, if they get a Metamorphosis into that Earth Splitter, then all of a sudden we're talking, right? The like multiple one murders knocked up, they're completely helpless, and you take them all out, but it's just so hard to land in the first place because of the mobility that we see on AHQ. And Jadok is just the war that's always in front here. Oh, Agnes Grass doesn't catch. That was actually really nice from Jadok to pop the Nature's Rally just in case it did land. And lots of damage coming onto Sun. The Hercules Madness gets popped here, which is not great for him. Didn't really want that, I, I would imagine. So not a whole lot getting done here for AHQ. Still three... And uh, 3,400 gold ahead at the moment, trying to push onto this tower, but all members of Flash Holes Sans Roxy are here. And they're going to be able to rebuff that. <clears throat> yeah, it's been a really slow roll from the Flash Wolves. AHQ has been kind of left to be able to pressure them pretty much everywhere on the map. Sun has, again, reached kind of, he's reached monster mode for, for the Kilgroth. He's been left alone to kind of just farm up, and then members of Flash Wolves have felt unwilling to gank him because they can't seem to get ganked on the rest of the map so it's going to come down to major team fights and you wonder whether or not the macro skill of ahq is going to result in things really getting out of hand soon because we'll be seeing blade of eternity probably finished for sun in the next two minutes and then he's going to be pushing with nobody really to be able to legitimately check him for mm -hmm. you know the foreseeable future you know what's interesting is that a lot of the gold laid from AHQ, at least half of it, is on the side of Sun. And he hasn't really been part of these fights, so if you think of it from that perspective, AHQ has just been outplaying Flash Wolves, if you think about it, considering that they're winning these fights without much of a gold lead. True. They've, they've been able to kind of skirt around any real fights being engaged on, but this is kind of the strategy we saw last game where... One team was just a little afraid to fully commit into anything, and the teams are good enough here that if you don't punish a play in its entirety, they will kind of eke out any bit of advantage they can. And I, you know, obviously you don't want to do anything stupid, but I think there's there's a difference between caution and respect and being afraid, and we're seeing it kind of again. Like this, the. If Ron is going to step up and eat all these power surges, make a play with him. Like, get in there, use that metamorphosis, find something. Sun will eat a Agni's grasp and just walk away from it, but... <laughs> well, he's the thing is, that's the second time we've seen that. In order to make that happen, in order to get out and purify the Agni's grasp, you need to do it preemptively. So that's amazing timing on Sun to get that out twice there, because otherwise you can't get away from that Agni's grasp. Now, this right here, this <clears throat> angle could be good wow. for them. They're gonna get the knock up. They gotta find some more pressure. They really looks like they're trying to col they're trying to spring traps onto Rush. Every time they do this, they're trying to get Rush to go in so that they can kill him because he's squishy, and they end up just burning some spells and then nothing happens. Right, and it's... then get out macroed by Sun. They're trying to just get. To trying to base the rush in to have that happen, but Sun gets actually pulled by the Agnes Grasp this time. He's in a lot of trouble trying to heal himself out of it, but here comes the rest of the members of AHQ, but they cannot take this fight as Sun is extremely low, and he has the most gold on their team by far. Rush gonna pop drone drop to see if he can't do, but in the meantime, Chaser is actually taking the tower up at the top lane. Once you chase Sun, Chaser gets you on the other side, and that has been the strength of AHQ so far. I think Flash Wolves just made a massive mistake. They caught Sun. They could have killed him. Kill him. Yeah, I know. He was so low. I don't know why they ran away. It was very They didn't kill him. Like they were me. afraid of the collapse. It's like, no, 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 no. Kill Sun. At least get that death reset. Because you're gonna go to take a pretty even team fight and they instantly Rush. lose Wayne. Woo! Rush is gonna get super low, but nobody's in position to be able to finish him off. Hawk is gonna get a bit of damage on a Shishi, but here comes Sun, and you haven't killed him yet. He's still got two lives. He's got no fear. Puts the pressure on a rush, continues to chase. Chaser is here as well to be able to slow him down. Stuns come through, and I mean what does Sun care? He's got another life. He will tank that tower forever and a day. Now rotating into the mid lane. Should be able to drop this one as there's canyon minions as well. Now then they can put pressure on the high ground. There are three members down for the side of Flash. Well, this could be it. have just won this game. This could be... Yeah, they're going onto the core. Sun has so much damage to potentially put onto this. He's taking a lot of damage. There goes a metamorphosis, but that's okay because he has the Gorlord to keep him alive. Rush is going to go down, though. Chaser, however, is going to stay alive. They're going to go ahead and take down this tower in the bot lane. And in the meantime, there's one more he minion left. That, that Siege minion is going to win the game for AHQ, and they're going to tie up the series one game to one. Didn't kill Sun. 
could have killed son. <laughs> By the way, I love his decision making because a lot of times people will shy away from that fight in that bottom lane saying, well, yeah, I do have Blade of Eternity, but I don't want to pop it now. He's like, no, I'm popping it now so we can we can push this advantage. And if he hadn't done so, there would have been potentially enough members from Flash Wolves to defend. And that decision could have won them the game, at least right there. Should have killed the son. <laughs> should have killed the son. Should have sat on his body. Should have gotten the team rotation in. Only person you were gonna have to de- you weren't gonna have was gonna be your crash. And Chaser would have been answered. Could have killed is... him. Killed him before he'd come. Before the full rotation had been in, and would have had that opportunity. But we do see AHQ winning out the day, having you know better macro, better damage overall. And I still stand by my belief. Stop giving people Cricknack. <laughs> I don't know if it that was too much damage. It does too much damage. It's too much damage. Okay. And it's, t- it's the single best aggressive early game jungler in the game. It's not even about him like being this over and above OP hero. It's he's good early game. He's good mid game, and he can almost always assassinate one or two people late game. He's never a bad character across the board of the course of the game, and he set Sun in motion. That said, I didn't really like Rush's play on the Crick Neck. I think it was worth it to take the Crick Neck. Even mediocre away from, Crick Neck is still better. I, would than s- I liked it because I liked, Lindus. I liked that they took away from Flash Wolves. Because if they had a lane Lindus and a Crick Neck rather than the Lumber, then they would have been in a lot better spot. So I think taking it away was worth it, but I didn't really like Rush's play on it all that much. I think even a mediocre Crick Nat, as long as the team is playing with a steady amount of regression, a mediocre Crick Nat still does three things. One, he still puts pressure on you in the early game. You have to be afraid of his gank. Two, if he gets that gank, he can snowball even in the hands of a less than stellar player on him. And three, he puts consistent pressure on your back line so that they always have to be afraid. Because that's basically what happened with Flash Wolves, is they were terrified that Rush was going to kill them, so they kept trying to bait Rush in by engaging onto the Pyrrha, and then they never killed the Pyrrha. They could have maybe killed the Pyrrha, as well as the Raz in multiple scenarios, never even considered doing it, was just trying to get Rush to dive in, because they got him that one time, and after that, it just slowly and slowly fell apart, because Chaser and Sun were winning the rest of the game, Getting all of that farm, building up all of that macro, dropping all the t- all of those towers. Yeah, and we just saw that Chaser did get the key player of the game. And as much as we kind of bash on AHQ for favoring that Vileheim, they have done a very good job of playing around him and making sure that there's pressure on both sides of the map. And when you're pulling gravity to both sides of the map, that splits apart the opposing team, as you saw in that last game. I, mm, the, I don't think they should the Valheim, I don't like I'm probably yeah, in the middle between what the way you thought and the way they thought but yeah this I just I think it's too high priority because I've never seen the Valheim be the reason they win the game. Well, They're it was really good that last other things I don't know. It was, it was really good, good last game. game, but it got left alone. They never ganked it. They never went after it. It was never put in a scenario where it was under any kind of pressure the entire game. Valheim was never under threat. Well, okay. Well, Any that, fight. Well, that's the thing. I think that's what's important to realize, though, is because Sun is pulling so many people towards his side of the map that you need to win the other side of the map or else that gravity doesn't actually matter. But looks like we're going to go to another break. Looks like we're having five-minute breaks between matches. So we'll see you guys in a bit for game number three. In buff. In buff, we trust. Buff, 能量饮料，含花青素，双效登场。开车的时候有 Air Wave 在手，随时随地让你觉醒一下。
将降临你。你不是想杀掉我吗？来呀！呀，嗨，呀，呀，呀，旋风，收割。像你了，这是你无法抗拒的黑暗意志。举世皆敌又如何？哈哈哈哈边线角色，你不是选什么瑞克啦，不是选什么马加啦，不是选什么近战型的角色啊，所以反而都非常好打。一攻，落到是翁尼身上之后，后面进场是逆友一发一发打在翁尼身上，重置了这个红蓝 buff， 再往侧边收。哇，这个重置之后，让逆友拿到一个 double kill。哦，这一波消息。超漂亮，这个便宜双花。哦，这边进来，缺德是直接往前粘尾，一路往后逃，所有人都快保他了，保不住，保住住的情况底下，这边开启了防守反击，直接拉开。哇，这个就是瑞克。而且也不是说什么兵线进来，我拉自从后面这样推出来，可是就是等于说我扛好扛好，然后走出来。对，那这边是哇，这边要进场有，再下，把黑手给带走，黑一直全部跟上之后往前一拉。刚刚奇奇花一扑是没办法把花岭给带走。麦基是卡在这个地图上的一个，算是卡在这个红区。哇，这个喷，这个是过墙喷，这个这个也算太准了吧？看后面会让爸打起来吗？一直进场，就是带红瞬移逃出去，不要再过来，直接炸死。杀死之后血量非常残，这个 f o 也是直接倒下的。那这样的情况底下，北村哇，这个被我这个波动死光了，而且还没有死，强到了那一座塔竟然没倒下，是那个跨抓 Q， 这样的话所有人倒光。Trust Buff 能量饮料含花青素双效登场。Come on. 我是 Buff guys, welcome back to the GCS IMD2. With me is the source. We just got through two games of the semifinals here between Flash Wolves and AHQ, with AHQ managing to tie up the series in our last game. Now we're going to a pivotal game three of this best of five, and who do you like to come out of this and take that two-one lead here? Ah,、uh, let you know after the draft because the drafts have been weird. <laughs> the, dra the draft、okay. had some strange. How much, <laughs> how much confidence do you have in their drafting skills as well? That's part of it, you know. I've got more confidence in.、Mm, <laughs> I have no confidence in either of these teams. I have confidence in J teams drafting. <laughs> okay, well, we'll have、It's... to find out then. I'm going to say I've yeah, yeah. I've had lots of confidence in AHQ, and I feel like they were just a little bit jittery in the first game. And it's they're so good that I feel like even if they have a bad draft, they can still win, like they showed last round. So. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, their drafting is usually pretty solid. They do some weird things、right. uh, every once in a while, and <laughs> they go I, they go、I'm, for the one percent play. Right, we're like, if they play perfectly, they、yeah. can win. <laughs> and they they like, gotta they gotta not do that. I know, I know they're Korean, and I know they're champion, and I know that Koreans rarely respect the West, but. 
But those are some really weird draft scenarios where I think that a not to say they would lose to certain Western teams, but a Western team with a little bit more of a we don't care attitude could beat them back because AHQ is is used to having a certain level of respect. I'm happy they banned Mina here though, because Ron has yeah. just been a terror. And they could just first pick This looks Kriknak good too. so far. Th- this this <laughs> looks fine so far. Just Flash will ban Kirknack. Well, and, actually, and, if, and I'm we're Flash all Wolves, good. if I'm Flash Wolves, I'm not that scared of Rush's Kirknack. Mm, I, again, I still disagree. I think a mediocre Kirknack is still better than almost any other jungler at level 4. And it just puts so much pressure on the map but they 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 believe in your school of thought there so we'll see we'll see how this matches out and if ahq leans into their roxy again i pick roxy in the second rotation don't do it first pick well they didn't there are other it. things that you can grab <clears throat> they didn't really need it and this sounds weird but as long as they can match Richter, shifts, there we go yeah didn't didn't manage to catch that Richter made it through but yeah there we go this does leave up this i'm totally good with but it does leave a Kricknack here for Flash Wolves. Richter is not necessarily a Kricknack counter, but he can blow up Kricknack in the right situation. He can, but I'm more I like the Richter more because you you you're putting priority into your matchups for uh Sun. It that's that's really that's really a let's enable Sun pick. And the Flash Wolves are taking away the Valheim because AHQ like it so much. And this this is a spot where I'm okay with it. Because AHQ value it so highly, taking it away from them and forcing Chaser onto something else is acceptable to me. Again, I still don't believe that Valheim is in this god tier mode of being as good as ever, but as as he is being prioritized, he is still good. But I've never seen the Valheim Ooh. be the reason they won. I've seen him be a valuable factor to the course of winning, and that's that's kind of why I've I've wondered about this draft priority. I like this from Flash Wolves, but the Roxy coming in. For Chaser, I like because this. you took away the Valheim. Mm. No, and... Sun, Chaser's going to be on oh, the... Oh, Sun will be on the Roxy. On the, on the Richter. Chaser will be on the Richter. We've seen this before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roxy will be on the Sun. Roxy will be on the Sun. Sun will be on the Roxy. Oh. Uh, no, no, Roxy. Debated. I still um, think I still think Chaser's going to be on Richter, because that enables Chaser. You want, you want Chaser to be as strong as possible, because you don't want it to be so lopsided where Sun's dominating, but Chaser's getting pushed out and chaser can or excuse me sun can play most heroes so whatever they pick for sun later i think it'll be in the bottom half of the shaft but locking on the liliana seems fine it seems like they noticed that at the last moment and they're like oh we need a mage <laughs> and better to have a liliana yeah. than some other random mass mage excuse my french no this is that is that is the safer that is the safer pick because you can lead into other dark slayer laners you don't necessarily have to go down that route uh they're taking a real long time with this marja pick which i'm okay with i think marja is pretty good uh i don't know about this across i think you just lost the draft if you pick this you just lost the draft flash rules yeah um <laughs> i think you're one one of the only people who are who is just who agrees with me to that extent that I say that ne- that Necroth is bad? I'm saying this really poorly. The point is, I think that Necroth is really poor in the current meta, especially in professional matches. And you're one of the only people who goes that far with me <laughs> down that line of thinking. But we but we, we have the evidence. I yeah. think if there's anybody debating with you on that, they haven't watched enough of the GCS and as well as the RPLs games that we have enough evidence to show that Necroth is really slow roll. And there are other answers to it. Now, he has a place. He has a place and he can work. And if he does get to that Clavis Sancti point in his build, he can be a serious threat to teams. And he can be a serious threat to your backline. But with the rise of Kricknack being as good as he is, I don't, like, you're basically saying, I have to get to four items before the Kricknack has won his team the game. You know what's a good thing to do if you don't want to get to four items is to build Soul Reaver <laughs> instead of Leviathan. That's another thing. Everybody's still building full tank and it's just not just, not coming through. I feel like I feel like you can just go Soul Reaver 
even your second non-boost item can be another damage item. And then I feel like you go into some sort of tanky item fourth. And But I feel like, at the very least, you go Soul Reaver, so you can actually kill people. Otherwise, you get in there, you you swing your blades around, you go, rawr, he literally says that, and then they're still fine. <laughs> if you want if you want a good second item for him, it, it should be Soul Reaver Boots Omni Arms, because that'll give you a little bit of health to make you feel better. We'll still give you the attack speed as well as the damage and the spell value. And then you go into a secondary uh, tank item, or you go into your first tank item on third item, and then you look at the current state of the game and decide whether or not you need to build Muramasa now. Mm. And I think that's, it, to, to me, that's the better way to play it, or you go into crit if you're very far ahead. Okay, well, sorry to cut you off here, but Lubu, Kilgroth, and Roxy have been banned in our second wave, and this changes things a lot. You can see the sweat pouring off of Chaser, by the way. <laughs> At least off of his nose. Or that's, is that just shine off his nose? Maybe I'm getting confused here. Anyway, this makes things difficult, and all of a sudden, Omen becomes a pretty high priority, I would say. I'd say in general, yes, but I'm wondering what Flash Pools is going to do for the rest of their company. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, Emily. Okay. I'm, I'm good with this because you need you need something that can survive and duel a little bit more because you're pretty squishy unless you build tank necroth and then you're low on you're low on assassination power but you still have decent damage in wanes you know you've picked two pretty good Superman? side laners i'm not sure what your supports but you still have to find a support on the side of flash wolves or you say superman for hq yeah hq that's not a bad pair um you just is, lost the crashed i don't know why they ban all of these side laners out when they need the side laner because you're trying to force certain side lane matchups. That's the only thing I can assume is that they're looking for a specific side lane right. matchup. And I think this I is mean, Rick, I think this is still Chaser Richter and Sun Omen. Either because we've I'm, seen, I'm, I'm honestly okay with either. We've seen Chaser and Omen. It hasn't been that great. And if you're gonna pick that, okay, this is a Chaser, huh? Okay. I think I think this is a comfort pick. I think Chaser was like Chaser oh. Malik. Maybe Sun said I don't really want to play Omen, and so yeah, uh, this is weird. No, it, it's it's fine. It it comes out okay. It does still mean you're playing the Richter into the Amelie. So the question is, is how good is Hero's Amelie to match up to Suns? Unless they do what they did last series, where they um. They desynced the lanes to avoid the Emily Richter matchup, so that's a possibility. Uh, last pickup for Flash Wolves, looking at their support options, there aren't a whole lot of them. I don't think you go back to Lumber. I feel like that was really poor. Alice is off the table. Uh, I, honestly, Annette is my pick here. It's a little squishy, but if you're going to be building tank... Uh, Take Where Murad, yeah, there we go. Take Murad and Emily. You're you've, you've got a decent bruiser-ish composition plus kind of tanky-ish, uh, kind of tanky-ish Valheim for Ice Fang. Getting the net gives you the zone control, the extra healing, the protection. It's a good mm -hmm. way to deal with Rush when he dives. This is very interesting. Look at the side of Flash Wolves. Just a lot of mobile flit heroes flitting around the battlefield, whereas AHQ is much more... Well, other than the the first three heroes that you see, the Crest and the Malak are very stationary, <laughs> for lack of a better term. The problem I have with AHQ's draft, I feel like if they had just gone the Omen route, they would have been a lot better spot, but Malak now just loses whatever lane he's in, and that's problematic. Hmm... That's only a problem if the if Sun gets nothing done. I still think that AHQ won the draft. They have good tanking, plenty of damage. They lack a siege potential, but you can deal with that. And they have more than enough engage tool. Flash Wolves on the other side are playing a little bit more of a difficult game. They have to avoid getting caught out, and that's fairly difficult with how good AHQ is. You also have to worry that if they're afraid to get caught out, that they're going to be concerned about team fighting towards the early portion of the game, trying to find themselves that opportune Flash Wolf style moment, and that will let AHQ get their macro game going, get those towers down like we saw up against SMG, 
and they'll just get too far ahead for Flash Wolves to pull off their standard Miracle team fight. It'll just be too little too late. Well, we did have a situation similar to this yesterday where we discounted the side that had the very high skill cap mobile heroes, and that's certainly what Flash Wolves has. So we'll see if they're able to pull this off here. Now, that said, AHQ does have playmakers of their Ron own. Ron's dead. Well, taking a lot of what? damage, but, well, it's hard because you only have one ability for each hero. So at this point in the game, it's a bit I, difficult. Rush, Rush was already going to his buff. I thought Rush was still anchoring in the side brush when I saw that. I was like, Rush about to jump on him and kill him. He's dead. Um, but no, he, he managed to, to survive that. And Ooh. Sun gets a lot of damage on the hero. So, they, so yeah, they tried to they tried to avoid the matchup. And or HQ tried to avoid the matchup, and Flash Wolves was ready for them. So they they paid attention to that game yesterday, where they sent the they sent Richter on or Sun on the Richter down into the bottom lane to avoid that matchup. Yeah, but Ooh, Malik is going to lose that in top. But honestly, I don't think you care as long as you get that gank out of uh, Rush, and Rush can just gank the Valheim. He's a prime target. Don't even bother with the Emily. Leave Sun alone. Look at this, Let by the way. Farm. Look at look at this 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 lane freezing that Sun is doing here. Heroes yeah. still isn't level two yet. This this is great lane freezing here from Sun, doing a great job at it. And Heroes is just from what we saw in that duel oh, alone. Oh, Ron, I don't think you want to be there. Eventually, Sun is going to come through. That's damage on the Shishi. Rush Oof. goes forward, doesn't decide to commit. J Jock had pulled off to the side. And that was a real dangerous prospect. That could have been a very, very dead in that. But the bait coming through. Wayne looking for his opportunity is going to bait in J Jock. He jumps away, shields up. Should be fine. Eight seconds on the Abyssal Dragon. So they'll take away the vision. And Sun and Heroes continuing to duel. Honestly, Sun doing a much better job in this matchup. Right. Uh, honestly, I was this matchup was going to be huge. Because if Sun can dominate it, then it's going to be really good for his team, obviously. But if heroes can even just match him out, then it totally changes the complexion of the game. And heroes is already showing me that he's not quite as good as Liang, and that Emily isn't quite the Richter. Oh, as I said, wow, oh, Wayne. stolen by Wayne! Wow, good job by Wayne to steal that out. That means that J-Duck doesn't have his metamorphosis quite yet here either. Neither does Chaser, so you can't go for the shock onto multiple members. But that said, the gold is pretty even here. And that was a big steal, though, to be sure, because he just got in there, got out. That is partially why you have that super mobile hero in Wayne here. But yeah, heroes, I don't, it feels like he saw Liang do that, and he's like, I can do that too, but not quite to that level here. Jayak's getting mashed up. Here's a hurricane wall to push him out of the way. He doesn't have mineral horses. He's going to go down, and that is first blood over to Flash Wolves. Yeah, good isolation play set up by Ron to catch a half health. Uh, crushed before he was able to get four and use that metamorphosis. Um, that's really where Flash Wolves want to find their fights towards the early game. They want to wait until they get tanky enough to really sit in those team fights with Heroes and Wayne getting deeper into a lot of their item builds. Uh, now, a little bit of pressure onto Hawk, but he'll be fine. Um, and the more skirmishing I think that Flash Wolves do, the better. Uh, that just plays to oh, what rush. their composition does, but Rush gets super, super low. But again, they're very conservative about committing all in onto him, and he will walk away. It feels like he should have had more damage. I, I don't know about you, but uh, I think the auto attack, the fall up auto attack, didn't didn't happen from the Cricknack, and that's the Sentinel. Great shock. instant metamorphosis plus a shock. Wayne, that's, wait, oh, wait, is still alive. Oh, he will fall. Now the pressure playing. should be on the run. J Jock chasing him. Paul oh, almost so many kills. What a timing play, though, by AHQ to just. J Jock had that angle perfect. Yeah, absolutely. And Flash Wolves, they just kind of took a couple of cleaves from. <laughs> from Chaser, they're kind of strange play coming up from them heroes. Wow, take oh, a lot pressure of damage on there. Heroes, they'll dive very deep. Ultimate comes out from heroes. And he's pop. thinking about going back in onto this, or at least putting the threat on them that he might. Right, when you pop that Endure, you want to make use out of it. Unfortunately, it was only there to stay, keep him alive in that instance. Look like a duel between our supports here, <laughs> which is not going to go to anyone, but it will provide some space here for the Abyssal Dragon. That said, Wayne's trying to jump in on this. He is extremely mobile, like we talked about. Hun Sun is... Trying to force him out, but and there is the Abyssal Dragon taking their Wayne, unable to steal this one. And HQ come out of here with a tied game when they were down earlier. Yeah, they've been able to answer back the aggression coming out from Flash Wolves. Uh, at least kill for kill and to get 
kind of balance out that death of Jjock. So far, we haven't seen Chaser be under that much pressure from Ice Fang, because honestly, no one's really been up there to help him out, but Jjock will get dropped to half health. Wayne will go back to farming his jungle, just wants to kind of play that hit-and-run strategy for a little while until he gets a little bit tankier, um, or at least gets one major item going. I still don't know about this whole Null Cleaver situation for him. He's He's got that tankiness that he's building up off the health and the stacks, but it basically means he has no offensive stats yet other than those two swords, and then you're looking at what probably is going to be a rank breaker out of him, and that's going to be a real, again, real slow amount of damage. Yeah, especially because he's got really... Not that many targets other than maybe Rush, because Hawk is going to be able to jump on out of there. Looks like this is tower is going to go down. And the reason why I say that is because, like we've talked about the math, it's not going to scale very well going to the late game. And that's what he's trying to go for, is the late game with this kind of build where it's a slow burn and you have the Leviathan in there. So it's going to be a bit difficult here. Jayjox jumping on the run here. She's going to be perfectly fine. Wayne jumps in, pops his ultimate, but he's going to be jumping out of there really quick because he can't do any damage right now. Hawk taking a lot of damage here, uh, that said, from Ice Fang. Ron has to run away from this Reiki shot, and things are going to reset for a little bit with HQ taking uh, quite a bit of damage from that exchange. And the Abyssal coming up in 15 seconds, so that could be a point of contention going forward. I said HQ has taken... Pressure on the wow. net. Ooh, Hurricane Wall comes out. Has to use that. Mm, if they hurry, if HQ hurry, hurries, they can get over to the Abyssal Dragon before that cooldown's back up. But that said, they have some bruised members. Oh, yeah, Shishi. Worry about stuff, but Shishi, he takes Rush along with the ride with him. But they managed to get the knock up. They managed to set out a little bit of pressure. Metamorphosis is there to cut off the angles, and Wayne will go very low. But no member will fall from either side. Uh, here's where we switch places, and I complain about how Rush would have died if Wayne had Soul Reaver there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I do. Uh. Believe in the Soul Reaver, guys. There's all of these burst opportunities that are just not being utilized because people believe you still need to build the tank. Uh, jungle item, and there are oh, tank items you can't build, but Sun will take a little bit of a ride there. Shishi brings him close to the tower. They are now going to turn their attention onto the Abyssal Dragon. Jjok, just keep it busy. He did it all last series. He did it on Alice last series. He's the series. master of bringing it to that little kitty corner and the side of that, that leashing area. <laughs> Like, the exact like, spot. Like, <laughs> Jjok just wishes he could jungle. He's just like, guys, I really want to jungle this game. And Rush is like, what are you talking about? He's like, fine, I'll do the Abyssal Dragon on my own. No, no. You can't stop me. No, he, he enjoys it. He enjoys the arts. The arts of just bringing the monster to the very edge of where it can be unleashed here. Here goes the shock. Actually gets Ice Fake. He's going to go ahead and flicker out of there. The Metamorphosis is not going to be up in time. Uh, Jjok... A little bit of miscommunication as Jjok tries to jump onto him, but uh, Rush and Chaser aren't there to help him out. But at least he gets use out of all his shields, so it's going to go away anyway, so might as well. All about the value, and that's going to be Wayne running in the sun, but Sun decides to put his pressure on Iran. Will silence him out, but doesn't decide to commit as his team is calling for the backup and the rotation down because he's been out of lane for a pretty long amount of time. We still aren't seeing any significant pressure to liberate Ice Fang from that top uh, half of the map, get him that tower so that he can move about and start dropping more towers and get the siege value in. Wayne goes into Hawk, he gets the essence of the windshield, and just kind of scurries out of there. Not too much pressure on him. Full tank build coming out from Chaser. All about that slow down and just getting in the middle of the team fight. Jjok runs into Ron, and it's just going to be a support slap fight for a little while as we wait for all the damage dealers to show up. Okay, so he actually goes for Spear Longinus, and so does Amelie, too, by the way. So, um, a little bit of a slow burn here from both of those heroes that they need multiple hits in order to get all of that armor pierced. That said, again, it ends up being the same thing as a Rank Breaker if you consider all the stacks that go up. Jjok getting pulled for a riot here, getting a lot of power surges to the face, but... Yeah, like we I talked mean, about, those are very the those theoretical are very value is better because in theory you're reducing the armor and therefore your teammates get better damage. But it's mm. I, I'm okay with it because there's two of them and because you have three sources of physical damage. But Rush is going to run into heroes because I like it on Emily than I'm more than I do on Wayne. But because you've picked up two, you'll be able to get that kind of side synergy and there's that potential 500 armor reduction. Chaser is going to go very very low. Gets on another bit cleave. Won't be able to get himself out of there. The minions will block out Hawk's attempt to return damage, and they will finally get that top lane kill that they've been looking for, and maybe get Ice Fang moving about the map. 
Hmm. I suppose... I suppose this could be just trying to get some CDR, some cooldown reduction here from Necroth, but then again, you you can get the same amount from Soul Reaver. We go back to the same question over and over again. I do like Soul Reaver Emily. is just better. I do like an Emily though, because she can just combo the entire team. Speaking of which, Jayjock going extremely low. Does he have to pop his Metamorphosis? No, he holds on to it. So I'm going to go in there with his ultimate, trying to get some damage here on the Wayne. Unfortunately, not going to be enough. He's going to get out of here. Seems like ne neither of these teams have enough damage to finish people off. Yeah, they've been pretty non-committal in those situations, but Heroes can dive on the sun, gets some low, pops the Endure, eats some tower shots, and in comes Wayne to finish the job. And that right there, that is the value of Spirit Longinus. Having two of them shred the armor, shred the armor, shred the armor. Wow! Do we Metamorphosis! What a play! Huge damage comes from Russian Hawk. They will get one. Can they get a third? Oh, no. So good. Good that angle from Jade Jock. These these metamorphoses are, are starting to uh, starting to wake up. And he held it for so long too. You saw earlier when he kept getting beat up, kept getting beat up. Looked like he might go down. Did not pop the metamorphosis. He held on to it for the right moment, and that certainly was the right moment. Able to take down two for zero in that situation off the back and and getting revenge for Sun. Yeah, gotta gotta avenge your bro and. Uh, AHQ, so ah, oh, this Ron? build, this build from Wayne is very rare, but Ron is gonna get stunned up. Does use the hurricane wall to get away, so to pop that momentarily. But uh, and that players are very good at throwing that on instantly canceling, so that they could just use it as a dash. This, there is not a lot of damage on the side of Flash Wolves. Yeah, especially with Valheim not really going for that damage build, going for more of that tanky build that you mentioned. So it's a lot of it just come, gonna come have going to have to come from Shishi, because it doesn't seem like you know Emily and Necroth can do quite a bit of damage, but not if they're against chunky heroes, and they probably can get burst down here from Rush in the first half. But um, that said, Rush, you know Emily has been a pretty good counter to a quick neck because of what we mentioned when his damage comes in waves, as when he uses an auto attack. The Bite Passive and the Extra Effects After Terrifying Plague, and also the Omni Arms, those are all separate for sources of damage. So when he attacks afterward, she reduces 400 damage with that Endure. So taking out heroes as Quick Knight is going to be very difficult, but instead of going for heroes, they decide to go for the Dark Slayer. Yeah, this is the right timing for them to shift into their, uh, their major objective taking macro strategy. If we take a look at items, they've got... Basically, three items across the board for everybody. Good damage, good mix of defenses. Kricknack ahead as the highest farmed uh, player in the game. Rush is getting close to getting that Fenrir. So once he has that, it gets really dangerous if you're on, who's done a pretty good job of skirting death for a long period of time. Same with Ice Fang. Even if you are that tanky, you do not really have any damage to deter him. He does have that now, so the question is... Like, will Shishi survive fights long enough to do any damage? Will Ice Fang survive fights long enough to be able to control things so Shishi can do damage? There's a lot riding on this mid lane, and you're asking for a lot of trouble. Wayne, very, very low. They could decide to dive this tower. They hold off momentarily because they pop the Drake into the bottom lane, and they're trying to set something up there. I feel like they could have gone for that anyway, especially if they had the panic button, the, the metamorphosis. Looks like they're going to wait for it to use it potentially here. And they are, like you mentioned, pushing in onto this bottom lane. But it is 3v3. Let's see if they try to go for something here. So uh, trying to kill out this dragon is Flash Wolves. And doing a reasonable job. Actually got it to less than half health before it even starts to work on the tower. Just lots of gust forces. <laughs> That's going to wear it down eventually. But speaking of eventually, this tower is going to go down. Here comes the shotgun to try to push members away. And in the end, they're able to get this. So just a slow and steady burn here from AHQ, it looks like, as they've taken down two towers. All right, so one tower down, possible rotation into the top half of the map. Heroes is alone, and there are three members, but it looks like the rest of his team is kind of looking to collapse. Wayne steps forward, tries to put a little bit of pressure on the J-Jock. He'll jump away, should be fine. Now we see how the macro strategy sets up for AHQ. Do they end up going for the Abyssal Dragon because their objective taking is still pretty high? And, I mean, this is a really dangerous glass cannon from Rush. He is foregoing the Blade of Eternity to get his Muramasa now. So he wants that extra armor penetration before he commits himself into his super, super late game item, which I am personally an advocate of. I think people get their Blade of Eternity a little bit too soon. 
um, depending on the build, but that's going to be a possible gank here on the Emily. A lot of damage on here is being slowed down, eating all of those frost hits, and they get the metamorphosis off. That's going to be another kill that comes through. Wayne does try to punish Rush, but cannot. Here comes Hawk on the side. Not enough minions for them to be able to really make anything happen, but Sun's been cutting off Shishi's angle, and they have been trying to pick up this buff, but that's Wayne in dueling with Hawk. He will go down. Chaser finishes him off. No minions for them to pressure out the tower, but they'll proxy the wave here and start a rotation to take more of the map. You saw how long Heroes was able to survive through all of that. I mean, three heroes, including a full build Krikna, trying to take him down, and yet he stayed alive for so long. The problem is they don't have the jungler to go ahead. Even even something like a Lindus running through there. Obviously, the Lindus was banned out, but just anyone really could have just done so much damage, more damage than the Necroth that we just saw at the moment, and just not doing his team favors, speaking of Wayne with his Necroth here. Yeah, and actually, Cryptonax kept that on a Mr. Stabby, so he doesn't have this full Soul Reaver, so... He did that last game, too. I was going to ask you about that. It feels like I... the Soul Reaver is really good for him. So especially... people, people, people do that when they feel they're going to sell their jungle item. Still, though. Uh, it's like really he just good. did. 15% CDR, you get the extra damage every 30 you do seconds. It when you, you do it when you plan on selling your jungle item towards the end of the game, and you don't want to commit the additional gold because it accelerates your build by something like a 1,000, if memory serves. So... It's it it has a purpose and a value, but it, then it eventually affects your late game objective taking. So now they've yielded a little bit of their late game objective taking because you get so much damage out of your jungler uh, onto the major objective. Yeah, you still have Jjock who has his, but his damage really isn't that big on the crash. So you're relying on better positioning and the fact that you don't think you're going, you think you're going to end the game before another major objective, and you want to have that full build as well as the Blade of Eternity. It's not wrong this is the way and the time to do it i just would have sold a rank breaker first <laughs> well my thoughts exactly in any case they're starting to get some work done they're taking out some of the towers on the top here po po popping the metamorphosis excuse me trying to get this tower and they get it pretty easily that does mean that they don't have the metamorphosis to take any of these high ground towers so all this is just to say that Flashwells is barely holding on. They are down 8,000 gold, but they have all the high ground towers. But as I say that, the Dark Slayer is about to come back up in 10 seconds, and this will be a major point of contention, even with Chaser just <laughs> taking so much damage. I don't think the Flashwells can contest this. And so here's the issue with this. You are not so far ahead that this game is over, and you've sold your jungle item. Which means, if you lose a team fight, the ability for the Flash Wolves to rush down a major objective, or to even come in and steal a major objective from you, is reasonably high. They are not so beat down that they cannot contest you on this Dark Slayer. They are not so beat down that they can do that without you, like, you can do that without Stop having to worry in. at all. They are going to put a lot Side. of pressure on Ice Fang, now possibly on the Sun King. Like he, oh, he, he does manage to finish him! That's Wind huge shield. for them! They, oh, I mean, it's ba it's burning out Chaser. those lives, and they kill Hustle, Ice Fang a second time, but here's Shishi in the back. He gets Sun down. He's going to be coming back up, so they're going to need to find another way back in, but Flash Wolves cannot do it. They lose two. So, so far, this is working out for the side of AHQ. They are now going to need to breach this high ground. They have not been able to open up the base. Here comes Wayne plus Ron. That's a lot of damage onto the onto the Necroth. He goes very, very low. No one able to help him get in there and do any additional damage to finish off one of these targets. Shishi now being bursted by Hawk. He has to play it very, very safe. They just need to stall out on the side of Flash Wolves, and it looks like they will. But <laughs> I mean, AHQ still doesn't put the nail in the coffin. And Wayne almost found out Sun there being back in the bush, but... There's 13 seconds here for Heroes, there's 5 seconds here for Ice Fang. It feels like a lost opportunity for HQ, who could have just taken the Dark Slayer rather than try to force something onto the high ground with 3 members alive for Flash Wolves. Jjock and Ron with a Wet Needle fight here in the top of the map, but it feels like an opportunity lost here for HQ. But that said, they are going for it now, and they are able to take it on the Dark Slayer. Let's see how much they can get done this time. Still wave pushed out here on the bottom lane for uh, against them, speaking of HQ. They have a 10,000 gold lead. And this could be the death push, but if they play it too safely, they could get Flash Wolves an opportunity back in. I think they've I think they're good at this point. Uh they've burned out the additional lives on a couple of people from uh, from the side of AHQ. I think now you can legitimately call this a good timing for the death push. Previous one I think was a little bit dangerous, but you've got enough people on your team basically at full build. So 
It should be okay. And Sun is going to find Wayne. Drops him very, very low. Cannot finish the job. That's enough for them to be able to get pressure in the top and the mid. Now stepping forward. Five men push into this mid lane. They will easily drop this tower. They can Talk rotate the up into top. There isn't a whole lot to be able to do that. Edge fighting is going to get slowed down. Take some damage. Chaser's not eating the brunt of their aggression, but there really isn't enough on the side of Flash Wolves because their jungler kind of lacks that stopping power. Here comes Heroes. They're going, the they're going to be able to collect this minion. The, they the core's dying. Minions. They're not clearing the minions. The core's... Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> 5v5, they just jump onto the core, and HQ take a 2 to 1 lead. Okay, I. Kill the minions. That felt like a platinum game at the end there. <laughs> Gotta kill the minions. Oh Didn't my kill goodness. the minions. Gotta kill the minions. Didn't kill the minions. We've seen too many games end like this where teams are afraid to step forward and die, and they have to kill the minions. You can't let them get in range. You have to know that range. If they get in range, you lose. Because it's that late in the game, it takes five auto attacks from, like, anybody. Well, we talked about how Flash Wolves is a good team fighting team, but not the miss macro team. And the one thing we didn't talk about about their draft is that they had very little wave clear. They had an Annette, who's okay in a support. They had a Raz, who, with the, um, with the splash that you get... From Boomstick, maybe? Uh, it's hard for him to step up. Hard for... I, it should have been Amelie and perhaps the Necroth. But... Yeah, there wasn't a whole lot to wave clear. And that just goes to show that they... Really weren't concerned with that. Yeah, I... I think we're... We're, 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 get, we're really able to hone in on this Necroth does nothing. Especially that build. Yeah. The... Honestly, I know you hate Rank Breaker, but Rank Breaker would be better than Longinus in that situation. I liked it because of the combo, oh. but only if Ice Fang also did damage. Because the whole point in, like, you're, you are right, it would have been better there for him, but I liked it in that combo because it's like, oh, if they're both in the middle of that team fight, and we saw how much Shred got in the sun, and he instantly got popped, if you also have Ice Fang in there on the side. <laughs> It's something on my desk. Uh, doing <laughs> doing reasonably good damage. Then there's all that shred, and there's opportunity there. And Amelie's in the middle of the team fight, hitting everybody, shredding them down. You would, you're enabling Ice Fane to do more damage, and I'm okay with that. And you kind of make up for the fact that the the Necroth players tend to build more tanky towards the early game. But you're it just they shouldn't even pick Necroth. Well, I think that the the most damning thing you can say about Flash Wolves is draft. Is that they had neither damage nor HP, or or you know durability, which is a weird thing to say. <laughs> they, had, they had a lot of movement. They were very fast, but you s <laughs> how many times did we see Chaser just walk up to them as Malak? And I was complaining about the Malak pick, but apparently they just looked at it and said, "They cannot hurt me." <laughs> so he just he just does the. You know, the horror villain, the horror movie villain thing, and just walks up to them very, very slowly and took zero damage. <laughs> you remember when when Valheim and I think it was Annette were just trying to wail on him as much as possible and he was just walking away and wasn't taking any damage? <laughs> it was just it was just sad to see. Well, because you, you picked Valheim and went tank Valheim, which Yeah. Oh dear god, if I could ever get a conversation with these time and these players, I'm just gonna be like, guys. Guys, they don't... you don't need two tank items for side lane Valheim. You only need one. You only need one. You only need one. Mm. Because the whole point is to get the slow. <laughs> it's not to be tanky. It's to get <laughs> the, the slow. The funny thing is, is that between Hyoga's Edge and the Frostscape, he was... I just want to... I hope that's in the replay. I know they're not going to put it back in the replay, but I want to see that... Excuse me, in the replay. When... You, got, you remember what we're, what I'm talking about, right? When Malik yeah, was walking he's, away he's from walking the bush, out from, uh, very very he's slowly out from red side, <laughs> red side might might golem pit down around the spirit sentinel, and just slowly wa like walking through this bush right now down. This play was really good. That timing setup was amazing. Uh, I thought they were gonna get a bit more out this of that. This meta was amazing. And too. This, oh, that was beautiful. But yeah, just but, no damage. Chaser was never going to die. It n didn't even need to have a blade of a turn. And look at this, Wayne couldn't finish anyone off. It should have been everyone was focused onto heroes there. 
Like, and, and Wayne had no damage, Heroes had minimal damage, Ice Fang did no damage, stop playing full tank Valheim. Just stop. Just only one tank item. <laughs> Pick your favorite. Alright, looks like we're going to go to a break. Once more, can AHQ finish them off and be the first team to go to the finals from the four seed? We will see when we come back. In buff. In buff. In buff, we trust. Buff, Neng Liang Ying Liao, Han Hua Qing Su, Shuang Xiao Deng Chang.
Im Buff. Im Buff. Im Buff. We trust. Buff. 能量饮料，含花青素，双效登场。What's up, guys? Welcome back to the GCS semifinals, where we have AHQ with a two to one lead over Flash Wolves. And the source, we've been critical of AHQ, we've been complimentary of AHQ, but can they make it to the finals out of the fourth seed? I don't think it's been done thus far, but it would be a major accomplishment for them, and it would signal that they are back, potentially on top. I'm inclined to believe that they will. After the the play that we have seen so far, uh, I I'm still a little bit concerned with the drafting this series, but the first half draft rotations have been much better for AHQ since game one. Game one was really off the mark, and they've gotten Crickneck two games in a row, and I'm still going to keep harping on this Crickneck. Uh, we saw Valheim be picked and do nothing. Yeah, I don't hate Valheim, but I believe he has been getting too much high priority because he is not the reason you win the game. If you are winning or if you have a solid strategy, he's a great complementary piece. He's he's kind of a step above Crixie. Crixie was status quo. If you were winning, Crixie's fine. If you're losing, she's useless. Valheim's a little bit better than that to the point where if you're winning, he ramps up your win, and if you're losing, he can help you stabilize. But he doesn't straight up win you a game, and the fact that he's been getting so much high three pick, I'm glad to see him lose where he was picked to kind of be in that counter scenario and not really bring enough to the table. And it reaffirms the, why would you pick behind in that position when you had the opportunity to pick Kricknack? That's throwing away the high-pressure jungler for a side lane pick that is you know, 60-40 at best, 50-50 most of the time. So I want to see Flash Tools kind of reevaluate that, and I hope that this is a lesson at AHQ, that the Valheim is beatable. The Valheim isn't as high priority, shouldn't be as high priority for them, and we'll see how that develops in these first few picks. AHQ seem to have understood their drafting scenario, and I want to see whether or not Flash Wolves try and punish them by removing Kricknack from the option list and taking us back to a or taking us to a point in this draft scenario where we haven't been yet, because Kricknack has been in every game. Looks like we had a Korean viewer in the audience, or at least someone who's Taiwanese who used Korean on their phone. But I do want to agree with you to a certain extent that stealing away the Kricknack for AHQ has been much better than stealing away the Valheim has been for Flash Wolves, just because AHQ has used the Valheim so much better in their games than Flash Wolves has been able to. And AHQ, even when Rush has been subpar, in my opinion, it's been better. It's been enough value taking it away from Wayne. And Rush, to his credit, in that last game looked a lot better than in game two. Yeah. But uh, we are about to see Mina make it through. So this is a strong first pick from Flash Wolves. But again, yeah, I don't, I don't, this, this one's Ron, actually pretty. This is a pretty even fifty-fifty. I'm okay with Kricknack or Amina because of Amina's high playmaking potential. From AHQ's point of view, I would be extremely scared of this Mina, and I'm kind of wondering why they let it through. I think they should have just let the Ignis or the Richter through. The Richter, because I would let the Richter through. The Richter has been okay, but it hasn't been ridiculous. And Ron was ridiculous in game one on this Mina, and. It almost prevents you from playing the Kricknack. Not, I say almost, because it doesn't totally do so, but it's... If Ron showed the same play he did in, love, in game one, then I wouldn't put it past him to just shut down a Kricknack by having ridiculously timed Dark Dominions. But, mm. AHQ, they still lock on to this Kricknack. And I think it's the right pick. The Valheim may be a little bit less so, but they use it really well, especially with Chaser on it, and it Puts a lot of pressure on the Flash Wolves when they have to deal with Valheim in one lane and Sun in the other. The gravity just pulls them apart in separate directions. And this gives AHQ the opportunity to pick their mage in their next session. Yeah. This is this is a good draft out from AHQ, although... 
I, I don't I don't want to get too stuck on the Valheim. This I think is going to be my last cohesive argument against it. Is what's the best way to phrase this? It's been fun on AHQ. I think this. I think AHQ knows that they can beat a Valheim I, now, but they'd rather just have it on their team so that so they can. I I think out. the Valheim results are a false positive for <clears throat> AHQ. I think that I think that the objective results for AHQ with Valheim have lulled them into a sense of security that they believe it is stronger than it is because they are picking it into drafts that don't have an answer and they are picking it with other really powerful drafts and it never gets tested solo. Well, maybe so, maybe this is just their scouting of Flash Wolves and Flash Wolves, one of their players, perhaps Ice Fang, is someone who can only really competently play heroes that get countered by Valheim. Hmm... I wouldn't go that far. I, it's not it's not a bad theory, I, and I'd have to look at every single one of the matchups, but I'm not sure I'd go that far. I think it's just really comfortable for them and really comfortable for Chaser. I'll say one thing. And even, again, though, even though the Malak this was... This scenario, I like it significantly more than I have liked it in any of the other drafts. Right. I, I'll say one thing. Even though Malak was nearly indestructible last game... I like Chaser being on the Valheim a bit more than the Malloc. I agree. Again, the, the, my my issue has never been that Valheim is bad. My issue is that Valheim has been prioritized like God's gift, God's gift to humanity, in scenarios where you've yielded things that are better, more versatile, open up more options, and you could deny from your opponent when your opponent probably wasn't going to take Valheim away. You know what God? That was said really my. That was when, really my issue. You know what God said when He created the universe. It's Valheim what, time. It Valheim? <laughs> it's Valheim time. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm going to really hope that, that, that God had more, more thought than that. Um, but really, that, that, that I think is, is why, why it irks me is we see it when you could have necessarily grabbed something else that would have given you more power. This right here is a time when I don't mind it. But we'll see what gets pinched for AHQ and whether or not they run into a drafting problem. So far, they've been pretty good about if they take the Valheim, finding a combination that works. So we'll see. Um, well, I'm going to set a flash wolf, switching over to the Tulin's a little weird, but well, I won't say no until I see what the follow-up is, and if they bring out the butterfly Tulin combo, I'm down. The thing is, AHQ has been very consistent. They pick their side laner for Chaser, and they pick the jungler, and they pick their mage that's what they do in the first three picks they've done that every single time because jjock can play a, a, mul a multitude of supports and then mm -hmm. sun can play a multitude of side laners they want to lock down heroes that their less their lesser players for lack of a better term are comfortable with because they don't want to have a particularly weak link in their lineup now for flash wolves so they have a bit of a different priority if they can lock down mina for run they will do that over everything else and we've seen why thus far but it's worked out for AHQ and there's no real way for Flash Wolves to counter it because AHQ picks it so early into the draft and here comes a Chognar and this is the issue with leaving the letting the Mina through is it forces a Chognar when I don't know if AHQ wanted to do so yeah Chognar feels a little it feels reactionary in the worst way because it's, oh crap, we have to deal with this as opposed to this is how we're going to counter it. Chagnar a little while ago felt like that where it was like, oh, you couldn't safely pick Mina because Chagnar was going to answer you. And Chagnar is going to get way more value because of also the shock. I want to see where Flash will go with this. I know I mentioned the butterfly before because uh, I think it was J-Team who ran it originally and I'm like, I'm still kind of thinking about that double power reset single target kill strategy. And I'd really love to see it but it looks like they're going to lean into a fennec which i'm not strictly against but i feel is i feel that's caving to the pressure that age he was going to put on you and now you've really isolated your side laners into that we have to win the side lanes you've put a lot of pressure on the wayne saying he needs to show like we need to get those side lane kills and those ganks so that we can show up and take those towers so we can out macro ahq and AHQ does that without having like a macro focused strategy already. 
Last pick here is going to be another side laner. It's going to be for Sun. I don't Roxy. really want to see them go into Roxy because I don't think it brings the brings the necessary fight. Mm. I think it's fine. I don't know. Marja. Marja, I like a bit more. Marja, I think will will answer that that'll that'll answer Chaser better. They have very little. CC, but I guess if you're dealing with a Kilgroth, then you're not really worried about CC. Too yeah, much. Lubu. I like Lubu even better than that. I like the Lubu a lot more. That is a good pick. I keep forgetting about Lubu. Lubu, Lubu brings what Roxy doesn't. Lubu brings push on a much stronger level purify? to the point where he's a significant threat to the tower. Has he always gone purify? On Lubu? Uh, you know, I don't know. Does he need We've purify? Seen, like, his, strictly Conker speaking, gives you 50%, yes. Conquer gives you 50% resistance, which is 10% below the maximum, <laughs> the cap. But, but pur Purify, purify <clears throat> gives him... The reason I'm okay with it is because Purify lets him run it whoever he wants to and nothing's going to stop it. Before you did have to kind of worry a little bit about what Ron was gonna do, throw Purify in the mix, and you're not gonna have to worry. And strictly speaking, you don't need Execute because your damage is pretty high. You don't strictly need Flicker because your mobility is already fairly good. It's you could go whatever you wanted um, in terms of spells, but. I'm, I'm okay with it because it's Sun, and because if you think about all of the things that are going to affect him, it's a multitude of minor slows and then a couple of big CCs, and if it's really about him being able to beeline to his target and not be hindered at all, purifying your way through the slow on a Malak, or purifying your way through Rolling Thunder, or purifying your way through the slow uh, from um, Kilgroth, like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, I, it's I, a suppose, weird. I suppose it's kind of like putting a Purify into Superman, where, yeah, he does have an ability that does that, but you just want to have that mobility at all times. Because his whole job is to get on top of Shishi <clears throat> and to make Wayne's life a living hell. If if this helps him do that on a shorter cooldown than Flicker, because he doesn't strictly need it, why not go for it? Why, why not just, like, you literally can't touch me, and that can also throw opponents off when they're expecting to stop you, and they don't. Yeah, could very well be the case. Well, see how it does work out here for them. JJ taking a lot of damage, and this is one of the issues with Chagnar. Yeah, he can scout out, but <laughs> he can't really stun people, so he can't stop the damage coming in through him. So he's just going to go ahead and be back here. Looking at our matchups, it is Valheim versus Malok in our bottom lane, <clears throat> which we kind of expected. And we have the 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 yelly, fighty, stabby brothers here up in the top, Kilgoth versus Lubu. Yeah, this 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 right like if there there's ever a contest of Macho in in the Dark Slayer land, it's gonna be those two. I do I do very much feel that AHQ has a pretty aggressive advantage in this scenario, especially if this gank works out. They are going to clear up the wave. This is honestly a really good level two dive. He has no healing. I really I wish they'd stayed that because that's dead kill Groth. Straight up there isn't mm. a way to save him. This is what I'm talking you, you, about. It feels like Rush could have just taken that. I don't think he realizes he can. Anyway, trying to get some damage onto yeah. Run here. Uh, gonna go ahead and jump out of there. Here comes the Chain Hammer Cyclone from Wayne. That is a very short cooldown, so it's not really a big deal that he wasted that there. Uh, J-Doc, not gonna find Wayne here in the bush, but that does give HQ a little bit of space here. And if they hurry, they may be able to take the Abyssal, but looks like, okay, they're gonna turn around and head that direction. Ron is already in the vicinity to scout that out. And members of eight Flash Wolves are starting to come around as well. But Chaser is going to push people away. Ron is going to go back, and HQ is none the wiser. So they're unable to take advantage of this so far. Yeah, no one's no one's going to be able to pressure the objective for a little while. And yeah, I agree that that should have been a kill up there. And that's that, I think, is the testament to your concern of Rush may not be the best Kricknack. And I... Again, I still live by the a mediocre Krickneck right now is still perfectly acceptable. Um, but yeah, that's that's an opportunity miss that really shouldn't have been. That's a pull in on the Hawk. Rush is in the general vicinity looking for an opportunity. He can kill Wayne pretty quickly if they find the right amount of lockdown. 
Level four is in for everybody, but the support on the whole. So, got to keep that in mind. Hawk takes a bunch of additional damage. Oh, That's going to be oh. the Thunderbird out, and they execute him. She she will be able to get that kill, gets Oof. the reset, and that is the single target damage you have to be worried about when there's a Fennec and a Tulin. Question is, is why was Hawk willing to oblige him when they were really getting set up to put more pressure on the Abyssal Dragon? Yeah, it seems like Hawk has just been relishing this matchup, this mid lane matchup against GC the entire time. And with the with the hero change coming, with no without the the Raz Liliana binary there, he got caught off guard because Tulin, while he's not as good as those heroes in the late game, he can be better in the early game, and you saw exactly why. Nice try by Rush though, trying to jump in. That wasn't a drone drop. He wasn't trying to kill his own teammate. He was trying to get in the front of, and try to block that out. Oh, possible kill up in the Chaser. top lane. We're going to see Rush collapse in to back up Sun. They need to find some kind of CC on him. They got to get him before he gets too close to the tower. Doesn't manage to do it. And they actually hit him with a Frostbite, too, to slow him down. So that was good play coming out from Heroes to step forward and not get it, you know, just at least draw some aggression coming out from Rush. Now we see the Abyssal Dragon being pulled again. They do do it fairly quickly on the side of AHQ. Honestly, I think they should be burning this down right now. And they are going to now turn their sights on it. Here comes Chaser. Might be a little bit too late. It's at about half health. Ice Bang being zoned. Ron stepping forward, looking for his opportunity. It's going to reset fairly soon if nobody does anything. And so that's going to be the Abyssal Dragon resetting. Members of Flash Wolves, uh, just their presence is enough. And now we're looking at Shishi trying to find another opportunity. Maybe get himself another kill. Because a fed Tulin will kill a lot of things, especially a Cricknack. And there's some additional damage that's going to hit on the chaser, at least put a little bit of pressure on him. I'm a little bit baffled at how conservative HQ is playing some of these. There was ample evidence that they could have just taken that Abyssal. And they, they had already scouted out in that bush coming from Jjox. So they knew that no one really was around. Now they're finally starting to get some aggression on Sun, providing that cover here for Rush to go ahead and steal the buff out. So first time we've seen HQ try to be a little bit aggressive. And let's see if Rush can really push this forward and start to take out members of Flash Wolves. Yeah, he's been playing it pretty slowly, and again, I don't believe in this Mr. Stabby strategy. I think you commit into the Soul Reaver. It gives you a lot of oomph towards the mid game. Chaos protection used. Hawk jumps over the wall. We'll walk away from that more or less scot-free, and now it's a question of where is Rush going to apply his pressure? He seems to be heading towards the top half of the map again, and you're leaving a Fennec an un uncontested on the Abyssal Dragon. That'll drop any moment now. And that's going to be pressure out of the top. They oh, aren't get him. finishing him off. Do manage Rush. to get him. And Rush that'll be the... tower going down. So the question is, is what is the answer back from Flash Wolves? Chasing into the bottom half of the map. They are going to put a lot of pressure into j -Jock, Dark Dominion on the Chaser, but nobody has died Hawk. yet. And here comes Hawk. There's minions Ooh. in the way, so he's not going to be able to throw all of his damage. But they do manage to save the tower. They only lose j -Jock in the mix of that. And that may even be a second tower going in favor of this Lubu. He steps up to it, needs a couple more auto attacks. Here comes Shishi. I think you might have committed to that, friend. It was one auto attack off. That's all you needed. Shishi will scare him away. So that is that is gold waiting in the hands of AHQ. Well, Sun didn't want to make the same mistake as Hawk and eat a Thunderbird to the face and regret lots of things in life. So One auto attack, man. <laughs> Commit. He can get it Commit. later. Commit. He can get it later. Free objective. Ooh, There's Chain Hammer Dominion. Cyclone plus a Dark Dominion doesn't fully connect on the Hawk, so he'll be okay. Shock was used by Ice Fang as well to put in a little bit of pressure, and Flash Wolves looking a little frantic to find themselves an advantage. I mean, it's, again, been a bit of a slow roll for Chaser? the side of AHQ, but I haven't seen Flash Wolves really do a whole lot. Yeah, Flash Wolves, the thing is, for AHQ, they've missed opportunities because they're being a little bit too conservative. For Flash Wolves, they don't really have the personnel. Right? It's like Ron tries to get in there, and if he can't get anything, then it's difficult, especially with J-Doc using the Chaos Protection and those energy surges. So, it just feels like with with the Fennec on their side, they can't really get a whole lot done. It's going to have to come on the the shoulders of Shishi to make things happen. And that he's made some things happen, but he can't do it all. Yeah, even even with the kill advantage. Gold's still pretty even. Tower advantage is in favor 
of the side of AHQ. They'll step up, finish off that tower. Now a little bit of a duel onto Heroes. Rush, he's waiting. Waiting Chaser. very patiently. He did not immediately go in on that. And now Wayne Chaser. is going to be caught by Chaser. Gets a lot of damage on him. Essence to the windshield. He's going to be able to keep him Walk alive. Rush gets a dark domain. Gets dark domain. Ooh. But he will survive. Rush. He's very, very low. The Thieves Mark won't take. It won't kill. It killed him. Where did that damage come from? I'm not sure how many auto attacks he got on, but... If there was only one mark? What What does Wayne have? What is Wayne's build? Because that shouldn't have... Oh, okay, he's already into a rank breaker. Ah. <laughs> uh, ah. Uh, uh. Well... Okay. There's there's enough raw damage there that it killed him. I was just really... Like, part of me didn't believe that would kill him. He also has Scorching Wind, so he might have just snuck in an auto attack that we didn't see. That, uh, That's true. So, he has a lot of attack damage on his side. Or attack speed, I should say. And speaking of... Oh my goodness. Uh, Fennec's good at killing objectives, as it turns out. <laughs> I'm going to try to get in here and finish off this mini wave. Uh, multiple members coming in. Here comes a shock from Ice Fang, but he's right below the tower. Uh, Jjock pops the uh, cast protection to help try to kill it off. And meanwhile, she, she goes down to rush and overextending is Flash Wolves. Yeah, a good duel on the side. Side in the middle lane to stop Heroes from getting the push he was looking for. And I love this I mean, duel around the world. They're just all they're just no matter where they go, they're dueling. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a great Lulu. Honestly, it feels like a really good matchup in the Kilgroth, who we've seen kind of get to just slowly get more and more problematic for teams. We Ooh, are going to see a huge dive coming in. Rush takes a bit of damage there, but he'll be okay. Chainhammer Cyclone used on the side to zone Jjock and Hawk from being able to take the the aggressive flanking route. Two towers, actually three towers down in favor of AHQ, and they are kind of building up their standard lead. Drop a lot of towers, get a lot of objectives. They haven't gotten any Abyssal Dragons, but they've gotten positioning on the map, and... Sun hasn't really been answered particularly well by the Kilgroth. Uh, Rush isn't really being stopped. That's going to oh, be chaser. a pull. Dark Dominion, full combo on a chaser. He's definitely going to die here. Question is, does Flash will feel confident they can take another fight? And they don't. They are being chased. Ron taking a lot of free damage. Hawk diving forward. Sun coming in at an angle. Breaky shot is used, but no one willing to commit. They do get him somewhat low, though, which will perhaps give AHQ some space to move around the map, especially since they need to create some time since Chaser obviously just died there. So that is reasonable for them. It means that no major objectives are going to go to Flash Wolf since they don't have the opportunity to do so. That said, there's a little bit of duel here between Sun and Heroes. Back earlier than that, we had Jjock taking some damage, but he was going to be fine in the end after all that. So HQ doing reasonably well in order to prevent Flash Wolf from taking objectives. And as it stands, HQ, despite the gold equality here, they do have the tower advantage. Yeah, they have tower, they have pressure, and that's a curse of death waiting in the hands of Sun. He's already dueling heroes pretty hard. There's the curse of death finished. Uh, <laughs> Sun is going to kill heroes. Like, if heroes takes the fight, Sun is going to win, I think. Uh, pretty pretty handily and the duel has begun sun is getting very very low but heroes runs away because he doesn't feel he has protection she she shows up to back up sun i still think sun could have won that in in the 1v1 but on the arms grab by crack neck his burst is going to start to go through the roof and they'll be looking for a pretty aggressive flank here as we get towards this abyssal dragon and the Abyssal Dragon is obviously a big point of contention here for both teams. It does go in favor of AHQ as far as contesting it because they have these towers gone and you see they're pushing onto this lane and Wayne getting extremely low, going to get deleted as four members jump onto him. That is not a place you want to be if you are a blue fox as that kill there could signal a time for them to... But as I say that, Heroes is actually taking the Dark Slayer. Is HQ going to realize this? Sun's going to find him. Sun's going to find him. Sun's going to see this. He sees it right now. Oh, going... this is going to be huge. Okay, so the Abyssal Dragon hasn't been finished. Sun is sitting on the side. He's waiting for his opportunity. Is he going to flicker in there? It goes to the side of Flash Wolf, so they will secure that. HQ will get the team fight buff, so... Sun didn't hard commit to be able to punish that back, but they've got the minions here in the mid lane. They should be able to drop this tower momentarily, although Heroes does show up, does put on a pretty brave face and make them fear getting too deep in enemy territory. But if this goes into a team fight, I think AHQ wins it. Yeah, they do have that team fight buff. They do have a slight gold lead as well. 
and they have the tools to make this happen, especially because Fennec isn't the greatest at really fighting. He's just much better at taking these objectives, and if he ever tries to step up and get damage onto someone, he's going to be absolutely obliterated. It's going to be really on to Ron to make things happen and shut down the side of AHQ. That said, that's why they picked up the Trogner for their side in the first place. So things are just so difficult for here for Flashwolf to try to make anything happen. The things are starting to slow down a little bit. That does favor Flash Wolves getting towards the later portion of the game where Kilgroth is a bit more of a problem, where Fennec gains uh, some stride, where the Tulin can really execute people if uh, they're caught out alone. So expect to see HQ kind of pick up the pace starting here. They are going to walk forward. They're going to guarantee themselves the first tower in the mid lane. There aren't any other major objectives for them to take, so the question is going to be how far they are they willing to spread out. Seems like they're going to continue their pressure towards the middle half of the map and then send Sun off to clear out some minion waves. The There's not a whole lot for them to do other than pick a fight. I, if you're looking at the sides, the one the one hero I'm actually afraid of on the side of Flash Wolves is Kilgroth. Whereas on AHQ, you have just Shining Lights coming out all day, every day, burning people down. You have the Lubu who's extremely strong. You have the Crit Neck who can jump on you. Yeah, the Fennec's there, but it's not really like a Slims or a Lindus where he can just stand there and fight. He has to get that Thieves Mark up, and it just makes it so much harder for him to to have an impact in these team fights. And he goes for the Hyoga's Edge. Yeah, that's... A little curious. But we do Ice this Fang gets the lead! The map. Ice Fang oh, is never mind. Keep, no, but he's alive. He's keeping them very, very busy while Sun is the one on the other side. The question is, is how much value can heroes get here? He's going to take a bunch of damage. Rush waiting for his opportunity. Chaser throws out some pretty solid damage along with Hawk at good range for them to not get committed on. Nate, you are oh, walking away with oh, advantage here. Great block by Hawk. Wow. Yeah, gotta 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 body block that for your friends. Can't, can't let the tooling get his resets. And... He could have died too because Rush has zero defense. <laughs> that could yeah, have definitely no, been killer. Rush is straight up glass cannon. Uh, only thing he has is a little bit of defense on his gilded greaves. And we are at the point where Chaser does do enough damage because he's at five items. But again, I mm, that double defense. I don't know if you need to go there. Um, I would have liked to see the Cloud of Sancti before the second defense item, because it would have given them the like if he'd crit in the middle of that fight, things would have just died. Um, they would they would have dropped targets pretty much instantly. Heroes probably would have died on his retreat. So there's still a little bit of damage growth there for Chaser. So if I'm Flash Wolves, Ron has been a pretty good meet now, but you got to get him into the back line. You've got to put pressure onto Chaser mm -hmm. so that he's not free hitting because so far all of the pressure has been put on the Sun and on the Hawk and on the Rush. And if Chaser's being left alone, like those three already do really good damage, and you've also got a Valheim in the back line being unmolested. It's it, it's going to be over Flash Wolves very quickly. And you see how desperate Ron is to make a play, even using the the windshield in order to get that extra movement speed to try to jump on someone. They're using that for its utility rather than for the damage protection on someone. And you see, again, he's trying to go in there. Here comes the shock onto nothing. And they're so desperate to get one of these good fights, but they can't make anything happen as it stands. Yeah. I'm not sure where that shock was going. That might have been a, a, a misclick and he wanted it to go further in because that would have been the idea but maybe it was also a setup. It's like, oh, Ron, if you get this, I'm going to shock preemptively so we can guarantee the kill, but doesn't really connect for the side of Flash Wolves. Now they're kind of being run around in circles a little bit. Uh, 30 seconds on both damage. objectives. Yeah, major damage items are being finished up by the side of AHQ in the Blades of Eternity. In, oh, oh there's going to be a Dark Dominion, but it's only on the J-Jock. He does pop that, though, which means that if they get some more CC, Hawk is able to dodge that. Oh, wow, huge Shining Light and Blinding Light combo onto multiple members. Wayne is extremely low. One jump on him, he might die. And they're actually pursuing this, but they could just as easily turn around and pick up these major objectives, and that's exactly what they're doing here. Wayne's still a half health, can't really step forward, which means that Rush and Chase are going to burn down this Dark Slayer and pick themselves up that buff. That's absolutely huge for their side. What will they do with it? Will they go over to the Abyssal or will they start trying to push in on these lanes? Looks like they're trying to just to uh, 
tidy up this map for the moment and then perhaps go on their push. But they're trying to get onto Sun here. Oh, Sun's, they might have found Sun. Sun's very tanky, though. He's actually going to engage them back as the re engage is on. Ice Fang has to use the shock to get on out of there, even gets the windshield to help him out. Hero's trying to jump on a Hawk. Hawk has to flicker on out of there. He gets the windshield as well. So a lot of resources burned here. But that all said, Flash Wolves is on the defensive. HQ trying to push in. That said, they still only have 55 seconds onto their buff here. Can they make it work? Can they use this as a team fight buffer here? When are they going to let go of the Drake as well? Here it comes out. And Chase is taking a lot of damage from Ice Fang, or excuse me, from Heroes. But in the meantime, they're pushing back on around. He's taking a lot of damage. Out comes the Chain Hire Cyclone to push members back here. But Chase is going to be healed up by that Dark Slayer buff. And they're pushing onto this tower once more. The Drake trying to just being so menacing here, potentially take out the high ground tower. This could be the first step in a win here for AHU. Lots of damage coming out from that shining light, and the, the Drake just keeps going in there. They're going to be pushing on the heroes. Heroes trying to take it out. Hog takes a major Dark Dominion, but there is the Chaos Protection to help him out here, being so huge in that regard. Trying to jump onto multiple members, but they're unable to take it out, and Flash will barely hold on, but that, as I say that, they go in. Here comes the truck, trying to take out multiple members. Ice Fang tries to pull on the cleave onto the heroes, but he is just going to go down in an instant. In the meantime, Sun pays with his life, but they are able to take the tower out because of it. Chi Chi taking a ton of damage from that terrifying plague. Hero's trying to go in onto multiple members here, but he might pay for his life. No, he actually survives out of there. Chaser trying to fight this with Wayne has no fear. And who has everyone exhales? At least I do. HQ gets out of there with a 7k gold lead and a high ground tower. Whew. That was a very protracted siege that I didn't know if HQ was going to get away with. Uh, a lot of that came down to the pressure that Sun got deep into the back line and just how much poke uh, Hawk is outputting. To the point of Valheim having no fear, she probably should. She doesn't win the 1v1 <laughs> attack fight with Wayne. Like, say. <laughs> that's questionable at, at best, friend. You've, he has played of eternity, though. You, but he sold more damage. He sold his Blitzblade and picked up a Devil's Handshake. Yeah, he's like, got two lives. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, Chaser doesn't hit that hard anymore. Chaser actually doesn't hit that hard at all. And you can so, see it right here on the Abyssal Dragon. Not burning down quite like, as fast as they want to. They're going to get it, though, and Chaser, this is a major objective. Chaser kind of hits like a wet noodle. I'm just, I just want that to be stated. This, For those of you out there, that's not how you build Valheim. That's a real risky. It's a real risky way to build Valheim. Um, well, he's got that. He's got that attack speed though. That's all he needs. Yeah, he's got that attack speed. He 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 throws them glaives, but that could be a problem because we saw how long it took them to kill things and how many times Flash Wolves got away with really really low health. There could be a space for AHQ to overcommit because Chaser's damage is kind of low and Rush might do something stupid. But he's got three lives right now, so he's kind of okay with with taking that aggressive play as long as he finds the kill. Ice Fang is eating up a bunch of damage. Ron doesn't manage to get the hook. So far, HQ is still in pretty commanding lead of this game. I All they have to do is slow play it and not overcommit themselves to a bad positioning. Chaser getting dropped to about half health. Heroes eats a little bit of free damage. Uh, I would say the last things for for Flash Wolves. Ooh, Wayne. Oh, wow. That's I mean that's what you got to get for if you're the side of HQ. Play it slow. Play your poke. Don't really dive until you. Are strictly uh, and until there is no option and honestly i don't ever think you're gonna hit that point you can kind of well, slow play this and they, just eventually win a team fight the, yeah they can find an opportunity here if flash wolves gets too they they their trigger finger gets too itchy and they pop major ultimates then that gives hq the opportunity if multiple members are low and have to go back to base at the exact time that a minion wave is pushing them then like, they can jump in yeah i see that chaser on the ice face he's not doing anything he does no damage he doesn't if if, if hq <laughs> loses this game it's honestly in my opinion off the back of chaser's build well that said <laughs> it is it is a math game at this point as hq is ten thousand gold ahead and they have multiple lives they shouldn't on lose members. hq Heroes? should lose this Oh, it's Keech is getting extremely low heroes trying to survive through all of this. He is taking them on 1v5. He ain't scared one bit, but let's say it takes a huge hit to the face here. Flash Wolves trying to see if they can make anything happen. Thunderbird comes out here from Shishi, but only able to bruise members, not take him down. That said, it does force AHQ back, and they are unable to take another tower with that buff. I'm I'm getting a little real here, man. I'm ASQ shouldn't be losing this. They are massively ahead in gold, massively ahead in pressure. That's going to be Hawk 
duking it out with Ice Fang. He'll get to about half health and fire off a Reiki shot. That's really just going to be a bit of a deterrent. We'll see whether or not Shishi can find himself an opportunity. Gets a little bit of damage on a rush. Rush and Hawk both at half health. This could be a concern if there is a routing play by Flash Wolves. If they can find themselves a way into the back line, that's an executed Hawk. That could easily be the first life off of Ryan, who doesn't have the Dark Blessing anymore. And again, I'm going to be real. That build from, from Chaser is really starting to concern me because he'll fire off five auto attacks and do no damage. Yeah, and things are starting to get a little bit dicey here for AHQ despite that 8,000 gold lead because if Flash Wolves is to a point where they're finishing up their build, so the gold doesn't really matter all that much at this point. And we'll see if they're able to make this happen. Speaking of Flash Wolves, AHQ not in the best spot to be able to take this Dark Slayer. They're trying to just hold off while some buffs are being taken here from Rush on the opposite side of the map. And even though they do have you know, technically the map pressure because of the amount of towers they have taken, one bad fight, and this could turn here for AHQ. Can Flash Wolves pull off a miracle and come back from a 10,000 gold deficit? Yeah, and you also have to consider the fact that there are two Fenrirs in the hands of Flash Wolves. If somebody gets low and they're able to get that, that solid together team fight, Things are going to die really, really quickly. It's going to be before you really know it. If, like As long as Flash Wolves can walk away from this, if they lose the Ice Fang here, the game is over. They Ooh, are going Rush to drop down. him, but an answer back, that's a lot of damage that they at least get Rush, one of Rush's lives. But you lose Ice Fang, now you're going to be looking at a Drake coming through. Honestly, he needed to shock out instantly. <laughs> Rush doesn't want to take any damage, so he lets the Liliana tank it first. <laughs> Rush, come on, be a man. In any case, Yo, he... he's low. Well, he does want to get high enough so that if, once he buys the Hercules Madness, it doesn't immediately go off. I think that's what, it was, what he was thinking there. Because the worst thing you do is buy Hercules, and the passive goes off immediately. They're going to pop the Drake right here. That's going to make all these minions stronger, which certainly strengthens or push onto this high ground. Lots of damage coming onto Wayne here. Hero's trying to make something happen. He's trying to clear out the wave. He actually does, but the Drake is still at full health here. Ron trying to soak some of the damage, but it is onto the high ground tower. Can HQ keep this alive? Can Flash Wolves take it out before their high ground tower is dead? It looks like they're unable to do so. There's too much pressure here from HQ. Too many health bars, especially with that healing coming through, and that Drake will finish off this tower. That's a major objective going the AHQ side, and now they have the space. You can see j -Doc just lurking into the middle of the ground. Heroes just kind of pop up and try to see if he can't take some out, but no one in his vicinity, no squishies there to, to for him to get his auto attacks off on the AHQ just lurking around this area, seeing if they can't take out this last tower. Dwayne takes a big shot to the face, but un doesn't go down there. Multiple eyes here for everyone to keep in mind. AHQ trying to make this happen, but just unable to do so quite yet. Are there, They're just... They're threatening the core and the tower at the same time. I don't know what you think of the strategy. I think it's fine because it's a slow roll. You're just waiting for the right amount of minions to get in the base. Problem problem is is they they're they're playing this really long term poke game and heroes get super super low. They cannot lose him. Oh. He's gonna lose his first life. Question is is what can they get stepping forward? Heroes is fine. Sun pulled in. They don't have a whole lot of damage to be able to finish him off. So really it's a minor res it's a resource lost, but you still haven't lost the game yet on the side of Flash Wolves. Now J Jock getting kind of low. J Jock is honestly gonna eat some pretty significant damage. He's at less than half health. If there's an opportunity, Flash Wolves could open this up and execute a target, but they're playing it very, very safe, waiting for AHQ to feel like they need to leave, and I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Ooh. Desticle taken here from Rush to try to hold off death once. Okay, he goes into the Blade of Eternity. He has a lot of gold, it turns out, just buying stuff left and right there. And you saw the heal actually pop for J-Doc. Like you mentioned, he was getting extremely low, didn't want to take any chances and try to bait someone in. So he pops that, but that means he doesn't have heal for this next fight to potentially save his team as this Abyssal Dragon is looming. Multiple members oh, around the rush. area. Wayne is getting pushed on by Sun. He has to use his Purify to go ahead and get out of there. Ice Fang taking a lot of damage, has to use the Shock to get out. And AHQ is just winning these team fights every single time. Flash Wolves just doesn't have the team fighting capability to their side. It seems like every single time Wayne just can't get anything done without getting jumped on by either Sun or Rush. And that has been the bane of Flash Wolves thus far. It's had to be heroes every single time trying to make something happen. And he alone cannot do it himself. It is the major problem with playing a... A Fennec, you really have to be super, super close in to do anything significant. 
Uh, we are going to see Blade of Eternity coming out for Shishi. He still has his Arctic Orb. Um, I am being kind of endlessly transitioned through here so that people can have as many lives as humanly possible. Game's still kind of sitting at a standstill. That's actually a hook onto j over the wall. I don't think it results in a death. It does take him down to half health. He should have heal coming up soon. Uh, no, actually, it's still a decent amount of time, so he's Plus only like going to be able to get anything. Like 15 yeah. seconds now, so it should be pretty soon, yeah. Yeah, but he's he's still going to be at half health without any real way to recover for, honestly, lo long enough for them to at least push them out of the base. He's going to have it back up now, so the window has kind of closed. Valheim being kind of chased by Ice Sun? Fang. Sun, Sun jumping on forward, the way. Is going to get jump into a lot of targets, gets hit with a Dark Dominion. There's going to be Ice a shock Fang. there. That cuts off a zone, but it doesn't really turn into anything. Ice Fang isn't getting a whole lot done here. Here comes Heroes. He's trying to get on top of something, but he's Sun, just Sun being zoned and just being... Oh, Sun is gone? No, he's, he's back. No, he's, he's Sun's died. back. Okay. I was, like, I was like, wait, no. Sun, Sun has too many lives for that to be the case. <laughs> Wayne steps way too far Run. forward, eats some free oh. damage. But that's a huge chain hammer cyclone. They finally get somebody down, but there's just too many lives. Honestly, you need to put a cap on the number of times you can buy this item. One <laughs> life, one buy. Can't keep oh. buying and reselling Heroes it. Goes that's going to be the death on he's the heroes. Back, he's going to come back, but they're going to clean the minions, and that is going to be AHQ. Taking the series three to one. <laughs> that game was so protracted. It was almost unbelievable when the game finally ended. But AHQ able to finish off Flash Wolves. It wasn't a guaranteed proposition there. They had to do it the hard way. But do it they did. They finish off Flash Wolves and they go to the finals to meet J-Team. What a story here for AHQ. Been up and down all season. And they managed to claw their way to the finals after it all. 3-1 over SMG and 3-1 over Flash Wolves. And they are definitely, definitely looking like the world champions they are. Yeah, I'm... I'm a... I'm gonna be honest. I do kind of feel like everybody's fallen down in the face of AHQ. There's, they're definitely playing well, but... I feel like we're seeing just Hawk. not the best damage. results from these teams. I don't want to damage from Hawk. <laughs> I I don't want to diminish AHQ's ability and their achievement, but it seems like nobody like it seems like they walk on the stage and everybody's just terrified of. I think that AHQ may be squeezing drafts out where we not really seeing it at first. Because they're getting what they want most of the time. Even if they're letting through True. some of what is questionable to the other team, they're always getting what they need in the first three picks. And then the fact that j -Jock and Sun are so flexible, they can flex on so many heroes. I mean, I think that the j -Jock is the unsung hero of AHQ, if you think about it. Because... They don't pick his hero until the end of the draft every single time. And yet he has made it work every single time. And they keep winning with him. And I just feel like, again, he's just making it work for his team and enabling Hawk. And I guess you could say Hawk is the other unsung hero because he's been making plays on Raz the entire time that I we saw maybe half the time in the regular season. He saved them from a lot of games against SMG. And he played at Liliana through 300,000 damage in that last game. Just absolutely ridiculous. But they're going to go ahead and give it to Sun here. Being able to play that Lubu and win out that lane versus Heroes on the Killagroth. Good job to him as he's able to really just bring the gravity back, like we say. Yeah, I'm fine with Sun getting the MVP. It The Lubu was definitely a good play, a good pick. So it's... It's more than it's more than acceptable. It's just there were times where you're just like, "What is?" Well, I, I give a lot of credit to Hawk in in that scenario, just constantly hitting them with shining light, blinding light combos, yeah. and just anytime Fennec wanted to get in range. But no, Sun, well, Sun is definitely a good MVP. I want to say that Sun he kind of did Rush's job. Anytime there was a fight, he was immediately on the Fennec. He's like, "Someone needs to get this Fennec, or else he's gonna blow up our team." And even though Fennec's one of the easier marksmen to get on top of, Sun, he took it upon himself. Every time I looked at Wayne, there was a Sun on top of him. And Suns get pretty heavy, as I've heard. 
Yeah, science. <laughs> but no, he was he was just on him every single moment that he could. So not just playing the side lane, but playing that all important role in the team fight. And that just made it impossible for Flash Wolves. Flash Wolves just couldn't there was no single dominant team fight, no convincing team fight from Flash Wolves that entire time. And that's because they were just bullied out of the game, and I think that Sun played a huge part of that. Never give him a team fight. That's how you beat the Flash Wolves. Yeah. And just the slow push of death there from AHQ. The funny thing is, even though it took a while, everything that AHQ did made sense. It wasn't they weren't beating on the bush for no reason. Because when they had an opportunity, they took it. Anytime they saw a misstep from Flash Wolves, some sort of step out of place, they were able to take it. And the funny thing is, they were able to continue to bully them out, even when the gold was basically even. Yeah, they were 10,000 gold ahead, but they had gotten to the point where it didn't really matter. Everyone had their full item builds. And still, it seemed like HQ was just able to squeeze the opponent out of the game just by using excellent positioning and excellent awareness throughout the game and eventually they just 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 like a chisel you know like the like Shawshank Redemption just pressure and time and eventually they cracked and that that to me is the that to me is the thing that that's looking so weird out of these other teams is it seems like the mental fortitude for the for AHQ is just well and beyond the other teams they are just they're just prepared, they're aware, they're ready, they're not making any silly mistakes. And maybe you can attribute that to being champions, to having that 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 time and experience playing in tournaments, but it is really coming through for them. And I have to wonder, does Jade Team f follow the same mistake? You wouldn't think so, but... Every, everybody seems to f just be falling over in the face of ASU. Nobody can stand to them. Well, I don't believe that AHQ has defeated defeated J team yet so mentally that could be a huge deal for both teams whereas i know that ahq beat both smg and flash wolves during the regular season and that's a big deal when you when you know you haven't defeated someone that i think that said they did beat them at the awc so there's that though at that time they were considered korea and taiwan but it's something to keep in mind So with that, yeah, we have anything after that. <laughs> with that, we have AHQ going to the finals. That will be November third. What's the twenty seventh? What is November third? Yes, it is the twenty seventh. November third is next Saturday. So tune in for that. I'm not sure what time, but check. I'll fix the description below here. And. I will tweet when we do it. Also, you and I need to talk about when we're gonna we're possibly gonna do other regions qualifiers, but we're not gonna do that live. In any case, uh, it looks like our casters are talking for a very long time. They're probably gonna go into an interview, but we are done here. So thank you everyone so much for watching. Uh, apologies to um, Hero Seventy Eight. Thank you so much for the host, but we are done. <laughs> right after you we hosted, we're done. But thanks anyway, and I uh, hope you guys tune in. If you missed some of the matches, make sure you go to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash t and I will upload the VOD most asaply. But thank you again. Good night.